UConn versus Purdue. The right to call themselves the national champions of the 2023-24 collegiate basketball season. The number one overall seed Huskies, who have just ran through this tournament, take on the third overall seed, but a one seed in the Purdue Boilermakers, looking to capture their first national championship in team and school history. The last time they've even been in this position was 1969, where they were runner-ups. They're looking to capture their first national championship, while the Huskies are looking to get their sixth as a school. They are a 5-0, by the way, in their school history. So every time Connecticut makes it to the big game, they win it. Should have a fun one on store. I'm Nick Roloff. I'll be joined by Tyler Smith here as we are about 20 minutes away from getting underway in Glendale, Arizona. And as you pile into the chat, shout out your city for me down in the comment section as we do welcome on Mr. Tyler Smith as we did the Saturday night Final Four games, and it's time to conclude this college basketball season with a bang. Two of the best teams all year long. It's only right that they're playing on the big game. That's right. 68 teams all the way down to two. Here we are. The conclusion of the men's NCAA tournament is tonight. And, I mean, is, is there a better story than these two teams matching up? You have Purdue after heartbreak last year, and, I mean, arguably the two seasons prior as well, finally reaching the mountaintop and getting to that illustrious national championship that they have not been into since 1969. And then UConn looking for the first back-to-back -back since Florida in 06, 07. Two titans of the sport, arguably two new bloods of the sport as Purdue has been pretty dominant over the past decade or so. And UConn stacking those national championships like pancakes. It is going to be a barn burner. Two Titans down low as well. Donovan Klingon and Zach Eady matching up for the first time. I'm very excited for what will be very likely an exciting national championship game, Rolly. Yeah, history is going to be made either way. Is it going to be a repeat champion? And, I mean, uh, North Carolina, like, you'd think one of them better. But Connecticut has the chance to join the elites here yeah. in terms of total national championships. And... They'll be past Duke, past Carolina. I mean, you get some, you get your name into them very big situations there if you're UConn. So it's awesome to see that. And obviously, going for the back-to-back, -back, Dan Hurley has just created an absolute monster program, right? I mean, it's not that he created it, but like has really revitalized it because oh, you yeah. have the Jim Calhoun days, you get the Kevin Ollie title with Shabazz Napier, and then they hit that massive lull where everything was not so good, right? Uh, they were in the AAC. This wasn't Connecticut basketball. And then they bring in Dan Hurley, and he has really, really gotten UConn back to the top and the tippy top of the college basketball landscape. Um, just make sure you take off the pregame there at the top. Absolutely. Um, shout out to Garrett Ringy, by the way, who sent in a $5 super chat. We'll show that in a second. But Sally's in the building. We got Garrett in Denver, Bryce. Type in UConn, GR in Fort Myers, Miami for Riley Shea. Chris Moore says ED in the centers for UConn is a big matchup. Yes, sir. Kristoff in Miami. Big Al says Phoenix in the house is 20 minutes away Look at that. from State Farm Stadium. How about that indeed? We are 16 minutes away from tip. Get your voice heard in the comment section. Who you got? National championship on the line. Are you going with the Huskies? If you are, type UConn. If you think the Boilermakers get it done, type the P-U-R's for Purdue. What's up, Time Man the Buckeye? Good to see you. Time Man chat. rooting for the Purdue Boilermakers today after yeah. you know he had just been rooting against. Uh, so he, he, is he basically against UConn? Because back on Saturday when we were doing, doing the Final Four live streams, he was heavy Alabama. And for somebody who is an Ohio State fan, as we know, a, a regular here at Chat Sports Time and the Buckeye, he's just kind of going the whoever against UConn mentality. I don't hate that. I mean, listen, everybody wants to take down the giant. Everybody wants to be the giant killer. And what better way to do that than rooting for a Purdue team that's looking to get to the mountaintop for the first time ever. Yeah, I mean, Purdue's been solid, but they've always come up short, right, Smitty? And coming up short isn't really the right way to put it, if you will, because they're always getting bounced early in the tournament. Um, they're usually good for, like, one win, usually. I mean, obviously, they lost to Fairleigh Dickinson a year ago as a mm -hmm. one seed, um, second ever one seed to lose to a six team. Um, but they've, I feel like they always won the first game. 
and because they've always had the size advantage, they escape the upset, yeah, and then good that shooting. second round game is when they usually go down. But Matt Painter taking Purdue to the Final Four for the first time in his tenure, and now he's looking to capture the first championship in Boilermaker history as well. Big, big game between two, two programs that have been very good over the last four years as well. Yeah, I mean, you talk about Zach Eady. I mean, this is a big moment for him as well. Can he silence the doubters? who have called him just nothing but a slab of meat, seven foot four tall. I mean, not being able to do much with the basketball, being maybe a, called a foul merchant by some, uh, just getting most of his love at the free throw line and from the love of referees. Can he silence the doubters tonight, playing likely his bo most formidable competition down low, and Donovan Clinton, probably the best interior defender in college basketball? Um, it, it's going to take a lot out of Edie tonight to get Purdue the win, and obviously – that backcourt as well needs to show up too. Yeah, and that's really the concern if you're asking me, which we'll dive more into this matchup in just a second. But if Edie is not going to be as dominant inside because of Klingon's defensive presence, who is going to be that person who takes that next step for Purdue to provide some extra scoring? Because I just don't see a way. And I like Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer as the backcourt for the Boilermakers. They've been very good all year long. But this is going to be the first time that – Purdue does not have an advantage in a specific matchup outside of the center spot. I mean, I'll take the other four for UConn in the starting lineup over the other four for Purdue, but we'll talk more about that as we progress through our pregame 13 minutes until this national championship game does get underway. But first, got to show some love to the number one daily fantasy sports app on the market, and that is Prize Picks. I put in a very fun four-player entry that we'll get to in just a second. But make sure you are getting started with Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app that has more than 300 or 3 million members right now. It's so easy to play. It makes the games more exciting. You just pick more or less than two on two or more player stats, and you can watch the winnings roll in. Yes, the college basketball season is coming to a close tonight, but guess what? NHL playoffs getting underway in a week or so. NBA playoffs, the biggest action on the ice, the hardwood are still yet to come. So get started with prize picks. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the basketball postseason. And as the college season comes to a close, we got, I'm Rolly? ending my collegiate prize pick season with a bang, a four-player entry, winning up to 10 times my money. I did a power play, Smitty, not a flex play. Oh, he so went for it all. I got I to gotta knock down all of these. I'll take the less than on Zach Eady, 24 points. I think Klingon holds him to a respectable mark. Listen, Eady was still good on Saturday against NC State, but he only did finish with 20 points, so I think Klingon could hold them up to less than 24. I think the more than on Tristan Newton, 15 and a half, I think he is poised for a big game. I don't know if Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer can really ha handle him from the outside. Mason Gillis coming off the bench for Purdue, fifth-year guy, a lot of experience. He's a great three-point shooter, shooting above 40% from the field from that mark. I think he's going to be able to knock down a couple triples for the Boilermakers. And I'll round out my selection with Stefan Castle, who had 21 points on Saturday. Dominant. The talented freshman that is likely going to go in the lottery. Just more than on 18.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Yeah, I'll take that, please, and thank you. Like I said, $10 here. I could win 100 because it's 10 times my money. So get started today with Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app. It makes watching these games so much more fun. Put something on the line. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Or you could just go to the live chat and description of today's show and use code CLNS when you click on the link, prizepicks.com. So that's CLNS. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And I, I, I like a, this. I gave us a little prize picks to, to get the chat rolling. Yeah, and I want and this, I like this from Smitty. I mean, this is why he gets paid the big bucks around here. <laughs> I took less than on Zach Eady, 24 points. The best player you can argue at the collegiate level in this game. I want to know if you agree with me on my less than than Zach Eady. Are you taking the more than on 24? Are you taking the less than? Get your voice heard in the comment section right now. We'll give shout outs to everyone who lets us know. Yeah, let us know in the chat. We want to get this thing rolling as the chat rate gets pumping. YouTube 
hears that basically and says, whoa, there's a party going on at Chat Sports. We're going to show this to more people as we get ready for tip off here in about 10 minutes. So get your, get your L's, get your M's down in the chat. What do you think Zach E is going to do tonight? I, I, I'd be hesitant to pick my M's, but I think if Purdue wants to stick in this game, they're going to have to feed Edie down low and make sure that he gets you know, what, what he's been uh, accustomed to so far in this NCAA tournament outside of the Final Four. Yeah, nine minutes to go until tip here. National Anthem being played. Um, Garrett says L. Wyatt says L. Time N says M. By the way, let's get Garrett's super chat I on think screen. think we should do that. And then we'll parlay that into our super chat menu tonight. Oh, GR saying M. So a lot of, a couple of disagrees. A couple agrees with me on the less than. DJ says more. Um, Garrett, though, is rocking with Purdue. $5 super chat. Shout out, Shout Garrett. out to you, Garrett. Appreciate you supporting the channel. Says, I hope Purdue wins. Listen, I know a lot of people are split on the Boilermakers and Zach Eady as a player, um, but it's a great story to see Purdue potentially come back and win a national championship after going down as a one seed just a year ago. And I've told Smitty this on Saturday. If Purdue wins this game, that is now two times that a one seed has lost to a 16 seed, come back the next year as a one seed and win the national championship. I will forever, as long as this trend continues, if Purdue wins tonight and gets the upset as they are six and a half, seven point underdogs against UConn, pick a team that loses as a one seed the following year as long as they're another one seed. I, it's proven. Uh, two times, and going two for two, obviously, uh, it would have to be declared an exact science. I mean, that's an exact stat. I mean, that is going to happen every time. I'm not saying so. coaches would throw their 116 games, but if some if one Guaranteed. one seed out there believed for some reason maybe they get stricken by injury or something, they, they couldn't win the national championship, might as well lose early and then come back the next season with a vengeance. Yeah, I mean, lock it in, baby. That $5 Super Chat, though, does actually create a Beers Cheers as our Super Chat menu here on display today. Any Super Chat will get on the screen, get a shout-out, whether it's a dollar, two dollars. We appreciate any donations, any support to the channel as Ooh. we continue to grow and bring more college basketball coverage to you guys as we progress here at Chat Sports. $5, like we mentioned, Beers Cheers times. I got my happy dad grape action today. Got Somebody's a silver got a bullet. Coors Light, mounds are blue. Colorado Shout out to Kool you, Lake. Garrett. $10 Super Chat is a shot. I got my Patron on deck. Smitty will be taking the Patron zone as well. Let's do it. And if we want to get nuts and do a $20 Super Chat, we got some devices here. We will chug our beers in a race to see who can finish their drink quicker. It's a, it's a battle every time between me and Smitty, but that is our Super Chat menu. We appreciate any donations as they come in. As we are six minutes away from tip, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up icon as well, because if you can't Super Chat, that's completely fine. But the easiest way to support the channel, commenting, subscribing, hitting that like button. We need to get to halfway point here. The goal is to get to a 50% like mark before we tip off. We have 150 people watching, six minutes until we get underway. Let's get up to 75 likes, folks. Come on, hit that like button. Help us out. Make sure we look good in front of our bosses so we can continue to bring you more live coverage of March Madness in the future and other fun events that we do like the NFL Draft free agency as well. So hit that thumbs up icon as we get almost underway in Phoenix. Tom Sipes in the building. Oh. Hello, Lexington. Yeah, listen. Oh, no. I know, uh, folks. I know we're talking the national championship tonight, but... Is it even the biggest story in college hoops? How about John Calipari breaking some massive news on Sunday evening? Jumping ship from Lexington, Kentucky over to Fayetteville and going to be coaching the Arkansas Razorbacks you know, like, well, it's not finalized, but it seems like it's heading that way. Um, there's been some deep internet rumors that Calipari could be returning to Kentucky, but Whoa. that's deep rumors. <laughs> deep that, rumors. You're going to have to get weeding in the message boards for all that kind of content. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw it, though. Did you see shit? Like, uh, I, see, I actually did not see any of this. Chat, yeah, there, there's some rumors out there that they, Cal could be trying to return to world's Kentucky. World's biggest smoke screen? I mean, my goodness. Um I know Calipari did have a meeting with the players at Kentucky um, earlier today, perhaps it was, uh, at his house. So I'm not sure if that was a meeting to say, everybody, 
start buying Arkansas Razorback gear, or uh, maybe you shouldn't believe all these rumors that you're hearing on Twitter. Um, but hey, I don't know. Pete Thamel, it's pretty reliable to me. Up to 190 people watching our pregame show. Make sure you do hit that thumbs up icon. Our bosses need us to get to 75 before we tip off. Yeah. Help us out. We want to stay live for the entire game, but I've been told that our bosses might come in and chop our heads off if we don't get to 75 before we tip oh off. Boy. So help us out here. Sype says, first time caller ahead of tonight's championship game. Can you tell me what a Purdue boiler maker is? Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. I got to be honest. I don't know the exact answer, but I'm pretty confident and saying it's the person who um, shovels coal on a train. Yep, I, I think that's a, about as good of an explanation as you can give. I think, um, I think that's what it is. The I, I'm not a thousand percent certain. If I'm wrong, let me know if someone else knows in the chat. The secondary um, Purdue logo is that, that front of the train, right. which is a steam or whatever, a coal engine train. So I'm pretty sure I nailed that. I think you nailed that, honestly. I'm taking, I'm taking the win. I'm taking the win. Let's see if you guys can nail a little trivia question for us. Not exactly trivia, but more of a prediction. Uh, who do you guys think the biggest X factor is in tonight's game? Uh, clearly for UConn <laughs> on Saturday as we're getting an emergency alert system, it's raining down in Dallas. But for UConn on Saturday, it was clearly Stefan Castle. Like Rolly said, the projected lottery pick went off for 20-plus points, and uh, he looked dominant from start to finish in that ball game. For Purdue... Um, it seemed like Kaufman Wren really uh, impacted the game as far as my eyes go. And obviously, Edie getting his 20 is always going to be impactful as well. But I think around the margins, Purdue is going to need perfection uh, from its guys one through four. Anybody not named Zach Edie on the roster, uh, all those guys are going to need to step up big time tonight. Yeah, um, if you look at Purdue, and, and it's hard to call him an X factor because he's been their starting point guard all year long. But Braden Smith, the sophomore for Purdue, he had just a horrid game on Saturday against NC State. He had five turnovers in the first half alone. I think he finished with six. Also did not score in that I was going to say, he didn't game. score at all. He has been fantastic for Purdue all year long, but was unable to give the Boilermakers anything on Saturday against NC State. If he plays anything close to that once again, Purdue stands absolutely no chance against this UConn team that is very strong in its guard rotation. When you look at Tristan Newton, Cam Spencer, Stephon Castle, Diara coming off the bench. So if you're Purdue, you need Braden Smith to have a bounce back game. True sophomore. Can he do that is the biggest question. And then if you're looking over to the Husky side of thing and who is the biggest player for UConn? I mean, it's not an X factor, but it's got to be clinging, right? Because if he is able to contain and limit Zach Eady's domination inside. And you know what? I'm not even going to go to the points, Smitty. I'm going to go on the glass. Part of what makes Purdue so dangerous mm -hmm. is the fact that they attack the glass offensively with Kaufman Wren, with Mason Gillis off the bench, with Zach Eady, because that allows them second-chance opportunities. And what happens when you get on the offensive glass? Well, the defense collapses, so you're able to kick it out to open three-point shooters which is how Lance Jones gets going, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer. Yep. So if Klingon and Caravan are able to gobble up those rebounds and force Purdue into one-shot possessions, whether it goes in where it doesn't go in, that will just limit the amount of three-pointers Purdue can make. And if Purdue's not able to hit their three-point shots or at least make a volume of three-pointers against UConn, they truly stand no chance, in my opinion. So Klingon, to me, has to be the biggest player for UConn. I believe he will be. The funny thing is, it actually kind of works the other way as well because of how capable and, and, and deadly that UConn can be from the di from distance. Obviously, you mentioned Klingon and Caravan as two guys who absolutely dominate the glass for the Huskies. Um, they can kick out to a Stefan Castle, to a Tristan Newton, to a Cam Spencer, who was quieter potentially than expected for most of the game against Alabama. Kind of came on in the second half more, than, more so than the first. But uh, I, I'm looking to see a complete game from Cam Spencer tonight. Um... He's somebody who's kind of revitalized this UConn team after they lost uh, a, a bunch of talent to the NBA draft after winning last year's national championship. You bring him in from Rutgers, formerly Loyola, Maryland, and now he's kind of elevated that team offensively, being the three-point sniper that they need. Uh, you know, running off screens, catch and shoot, even you know, one dribble pull up. Cam Spencer is not afraid of the moment. He didn't exactly uh, rise to it uh, to, the, to his fullest extent on Saturday. I think he will tonight.
Yeah, appreciate Donnie and Robert Bruce getting in the comments section. We have 280 people watching here as we are going to get tipped off once we come back from this commercial break that's currently on screen. If you are ready for today's game, get type in the me. comment section and type me. I'm spamming my me's, but let me know if you guys are ready for the national championship game. It is always bringing a tear to my eye this night because, yes, we're going to get a great game in hopes at least today. But it is our last collegiate basketball game that we get to watch for so some sad. time. Um, so it's a bittersweet night, but I'm always ready. So make sure you are showing me you are ready by spamming me down below. Ty Man, Susie, Dylan, Robert, Charles, Sype. Spam those me's. Chris get the chat Moore. rate pumping. Spam me if you're ready for tip-off. Also, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Come on, there's 300 plus people watching, only 50 likes. Are you kidding? It's unacceptable, folks. Come on. Gotta get at least to 75 before this game starts. We got, are. I mean, the goal, the goal is triple digit, man. We gotta get the like button up. It's free, man. We're live for the game for free. Come what on. What else can you ask for? The live NCAA National Championship watch party. You guys aren't gonna wanna be anywhere else than chat sports. I know my buddy Tom Sipe in the chat earlier said the biggest X factor for this game might be Ian Eagle. No, I think it's Tyler Smith and Nick Roloff right here on chat sports bringing you the best action and the most insight possible during your national Tonight's championship. Tonight's officials, Jeffrey Anderson, shout out to 585, Terry Oglesby, Roger Ayers, the experienced crew. Ayers, Ayers is, a, is a veteran. Yeah, high knees as GR points out. Listen, by the way, if we get to 100 likes soon, I'm taking a shot to Keel. Hit that thumbs up icon. We're ready to get underway in Phoenix, folks. Here we go. Playing it at 80, center circle. Anderson ready to give the tip, and it is won like it always is by Zach Eady. Purdue will start with the ball. Stefan Castle marking Braden Smith to start. Smith drives inside. He pump fakes and relocates it out to Lawyer. They're going to reset the offense over to Smith on the left side as they try to get it in the ED and the block. Klingon does a good job of denying. Now it's Lance Jones working on Spencer. They eventually do get it to ED. Deep block. This is a far post up. Deep right hook. He left it short. Rebound. Ball on the deck. Edie's We're on gonna the floor. We're going to jump ball right away, and it will go to UConn. And that's the difference right there, folks. The fact that Donovan Klingon at 7-2... 280 is able to give absolutely no ground to Edie as Edie tried to back him down on two or three dribbles. Can't move that big body that Klingon has. Forces a right hook almost from the free throw line. As the great Luther Van Dross says, the ball is tipped. And there you are. Caravan, left wing three, wide open. Good set from UConn, unable to knock it down. Rebound is to Braden Smith as he sailed in. Smith. Drove inside, drops it off to Kaufman and Ren. He'll try a right hook over Caravan. Mm. And that's how tonight's scoring gets started. The sophomore for Purdue, who took place of Mason Gillis' starting spot, gets the first basket of tonight's game. Like I mentioned, Kaufman Red has been it was very impactful this weekend against NC State. Can he continue that hot play against UConn? He's already scored. Spencer three bottoms as UConn takes their first lead of the game. Spencer, he's a very animated player. He will absolutely give it to the crowd, and he's already talking his ish early in this one after knocking down his first shot. The fifth-year player, former loyal Maryland player, then Rutgers transfer. He's been across the pond, I tell you what. Hey, humble brag, Smitty's two X-Factors open tonight scoring. And one inside. Lance Jones gets Woo! to the rack. Tristan Newton with the body bump. And Purdue jumps back out in front. And we'll have a chance at an old-fashioned three-point play. Don't see Lance Jones take it to the rack often. He's a three-point marksman for the Boilermakers. But he got inside there. The little guy with a kiss. Jones Tristan Newton converts. picks up the first. Jones converts a three-point play. Purdue leads 5-3 to three, about two minutes in. Four points in the paint, by the way. So they've gotten to the rack on their first two baskets. Castle has it left wing. We'll see if Purdue implores the dare him to shoot mentality that Nate Oates did. It did not work. Newton gets inside. Goes up on Lawyer. That's a foul called on Fletcher Lawyer. So Newton's going to head to the line with a hope to tie this game up 
at five. That is also something to keep your eye out for, Smitty. Tristan Newton is a big body guard who can work inside as well as the outside. You wonder if they try to post him up on the smaller and less strong Fletcher Lawyer or whether it be Braden Smith. Yeah, it's going to be if foul trouble around the board is actually going to be interesting tonight. As both teams run about seven deep. I, I'd say I trust UConn's reserves a little bit more, the guys who don't maybe get double-digit minutes uh, playing per game. But both teams, not the deepest. Very, very top-heavy, very talented all around. But, you know, not exactly running eight, nine guys tonight. Newton made the first, so he gets on the board for the first time today. He was the starting point guard for the Huskies last year when they beat San Diego State in the national championship game. Newton finishes off the trip at the line with another make. It's tied at five. Who do you got? This one's knotted up early. Looks to be back and forth so far. Type those Yukons for the Connecticut Huskies. Type P-U-R for the Purdue Boilermakers. Good set by Purdue. Gets Kaufman right inside. His layup, I think it got blocked by Klingon. Certainly affected. It comes up short. Huskies out and running now. They get it to the big man Klingon at the top of the key. He'll act as the hub. Hand off to Spencer. Spencer gets inside. Great move by the veteran getting a bucket. He's got five. Leading scorer in this game. Great job by Spencer to play off two feet. Hop step there just inside the elbow. Not there initially. Step through layup to put the Huskies up two. The Purdue guards, man, they're just so patient around the rim. Edie's got position inside. Right hook over Klingon falls. He's wow. on the board for the first time tonight. 7-0. And that's what Edie does so good. He does his work early. He gets the position inside, which means he's allowed to just catch it. One dribble right hook or sometimes not even put it on the deck. Newton, right elbow jumper, comes up short, doesn't go. Rebound Purdue. And then Kaufman Wren throws it out of bounds. Little miscommunication between him and Braden Smith. And it's a turnover on Purdue. Second of the game for the Boilermakers as they did have that turnover on the first. I was actually on the rebound, so I wouldn't classify that as a turnover, actually. Love the pace we're playing at, though. High intensity, high tempo. These teams want to score. Another opportunity for UConn after the mishap from Purdue. UConn almost throws it away there. Instead, it'll be Spencer probing inside off of a screen from Klingon. Spencer, pump fake, pump fake, drop off the Klingon. A two-handed slam as the Huskies go back out in front. Cam Spencer has had his fingerprints all over this one. Accounted for seven of the nine points for the Huskies thus far. Like I said, I, lo I love the way Cam Spencer plays, and he's probably going to want to get involved early as he has so far after not performing as well against Alabama. Look at Edie inside getting position on Klingon tying this one back up at nine. Edie now up to four points on two or three shooting after missing his first on Klingon. He's gotten the better of the sophomore the last two trips. Castle swings over to Newton. Now they'll post up Klingon. This is not a strong point of his game. Struggles with back-to-the-basket play. That's why I gave it right out. Kicks it right back out to Spencer. Cam Spencer's been hot. He'll pump fake. Looks to get it back to the Klingon. Instead, he'll just take a jump over 80. And look at Cam Spencer go. Nine points accounted for. He's already talking to the crowd. A wow. perfect three for three from the field. He's got seven. Like you said, his fingerprints are on this one early. Both teams four of six from the field so far. As Edie's got position again. Goes back to his right hand. Off the backboard, good defense by Klingon. Edie wanted a foul. Pass ahead by Spencer. Castle misses the layup. Bodies Offensive are flying. Rebound by Caravan. It swung around. Castle thought about a three. Pump faked and walked with it. Travel. And that will take us to our first TV timeout. Purdue trails 11-9. to Edie and Klingon even up at two in their battles. Edie's one... Two times on the post-ups, Klingon's won the other two. Edie has four points on two of four shooting. Missed opportunity for Purdue, or excuse me, UConn there. They had an easy run-out layup, but Castle smoked it and then walked with it after they got the offensive rebound. 450 people watching. Come on, folks. I'm begging you to hit the thumbs up icon. We're here live for free on National Championship Monday, and we only have 87 likes. 450 people watch him. Can we get at least 100 right here before the commercial break ends? I mean, that should be easy. We get past 100 likes during this commercial break. I'm opening up the Patron and taking a shot of tequila. I'll, Come give on, us, I'll give you a free beer cheers as well once we get past 100 likes. 11 away. Come on. 
Garrett's got the right idea. Shot to Garrett. Hit that like button, people. I don't care who you're rooting for, whether it be Purdue or UConn. If you want whatever team you are rooting for to win, hit that thumbs up button. Don't jinx it. Don't hit be the, the guy who vibes didn't... out into the universe for your own self. Yeah, don't be the guy who didn't like the video and be like, oh wow, if my team if my team loses, like maybe I should have liked that that YouTube stream that when I was I was on for good vibes. All right, we did cross and get in the triple digits, so I'm a man of my word. First shot of the day coming up. If you want more shots, ten dollar super chat is how you at least forced me to take a shot, Tequila. I'll take a shout-out to Kilo at the, at the next 100 likes. Jin Jin says, thanks, guys, for following this game for us tonight. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Jin Jin, for coming in and hanging out with us. We know not everybody has cable. Uh, obviously, this game tonight was a surprise to me and Roly being broadcasted exclusively on uh, TBS, which yeah. is wild. It's on TNT, too. Probably True TV, too. I didn't check True. Yeah, yeah but you know, it, it's also one of those things where it's like, I always grew up watching the NCAA championship on CBS. No? Is it, doesn't everybody else remember that? Or is that a, one of those Mandela effect things? No, it definitely was on, uh, definitely was on CBS. Now, if you guys want to take it to the next level after you hit the thumbs up icon, we do have a super chat menu roll, and that's why. Is that true, Tom? Has it always been CBS? I feel like that's not. I, 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 maybe it's a Mandela effect for me and Rolly. Maybe it's, you know, the, the, the Texas air getting Charles, to us down uh, yeah, here. Charles, yeah. Maybe we're spreading false narratives out there. Fake news, uh, Rolly and Smitty. But, but uh, like these beer cheers we've been telling you about, the, the Patron Zone, doing shots. Dollar sign next to the chat box. You can send in a super chat if you feel so inclined to uh, donate to tonight's stream. We really appreciate it. Any super chat, you get your name on screen as well as any message you like to throw in the super chat as well. And every, if you send in a $5, we're drinking beers. Send in a $10, we're taking shots. And if you send in a $20, me and Roly are doing a beer bong race. I'll even shotgun my full can if I'm feeling up to it. All right. We're set to get back in action as UConn holds an 11-9 lead. Purdue's basketball with 15.04 to go in the first half. That's what I thought too, Clark. Alex says, what if I sent 30? Uh, I'll do a beer. We'll do a race and take a shot. 100%. All right. Purdue has their first substitution of the game is Mason Gillis. Oh! In, and they run a nice lob play for Zach Eady. And Eady slams it home. He's up to six points early in this one. Wow. It was kind of a little bit of a poster there. Don Donovan Klingon definitely caught some contact. Great pass there by Braden Smith. Lobbed it up perfectly. No substitutions for UConn just yet. Camden Hyde also checks in for Purdue. So pair of substitutions for Matt Painter. Newton drives inside. Out to Castle. Castle drives back to Newton. Corner three. It falls! Whoa. Newton now up to five points on the game as UConn takes their largest lead of the evening, which is just three points. Like you said, the upperclassman guard for UConn. This is a big stage. He's going to want to step up big, and that was a huge shot to take the lead here. I mean, guard play has been massive here. Spencer has accounted for nine points. Newton the other five. It's almost like guards win in March. Braden Smith misses the layup. He was someone I said had to have a good game. He just smoked it there. And then foul committed by Lance Jones. It'll be the second on the Boilermakers so far. Castle had it out in transition. Silly oh foul. Silly foul by Lance Jones there in the backcourt. Zach Eady's feeling himself early, already having six points on three of five shooting. Got football double gaming saying, How's, hey, hi, how was your day? Our day's going great here. We got the last game of college basketball season on UConn and Purdue. First sub of the game now for the Huskies. Diara checks in, taking out the freshman Stefan Castle. Diara has it. Running the set for UConn, finds a curling Spencer. Spencer inside, blocked by Edie. Rebound tipped out, though. The UConn will have another opportunity. Newton drives on high, gets to the rim. Rejected again by Edie. And Zach Edie showing some emotion to the Purdue faithful underneath the basket. Two blocks on one possession. That 7-4 frame with a wingspan that reaches nearly eight feet. On display right now for the Boilermakers. I mean, that one felt personal. That was an emphatic block. Step back three. Spencer, no good. Rebound, Edie. Tipped around. He's got it now. 
Edie's had his fingerprints on this game as well. He wants that. Yeah, he wants, he wants it, that banner. Raiden Smith will now run a pick and roll with Edie. Good defense by Diara, really making them work. Smith gets a step, drop off Edie. Met by a pair of Huskies, now gets to his right hand hook. Gets the friendly oh, roll, oh, oh, oh. Edie up to eight points. Some might say the senior roll. Man, Zach Edie's got that soft touch, folks. It's not just size. He really has a good feel around the basket. He's four of six from the field. Now, Klingon's been defending him well, but he's been letting him get to his right hand. Diara inside, off glass, good. He did a great job off the bench on Saturday against NC State. Does another good job getting to the rim there and analyzing Edie. Is he going to come over and help, or is he going to stay home? He stayed home. He read it correctly and got the layup. Gillis met by Caravan up top. Swings it over to Lance Jones. Jones inside the ED, posting up Klingon once again. Oh. Up and under. And one. Zach Eady dominating Donovan Klingon inside to start this game. Already in double figures with 10 points. Chance to make it 11. Oh! A hundred. Dollar super, super chat, chat from Alec Lewis. Bang! Oh my God! Are this, you kidding me? This is unbelievable. Can't believe it. Oh man, he says, "Have watched you guys for about a year. I hope this makes your day. Keep the channel growing. Thank you, Alec Lewis. Shout out to you making this national championship stream." Championship stream Absolutely unbelievable as Edie converts the three-point play. Alec, we will up. pay this off in our next timeout. 100%. But we have a game to break down. As you did say, Edie went one of one. Game is tied at 16. Almost stolen by Purdue, but it results in an easy layup for the Huskies. And they go back out in front by two. It was a nice find inside by Diara. High level basketball being played right now in Glendale. Braden Smith harassed by Diara, drives inside, swings at the Gillis in the corner, inside the Edie. Edie doubled, ball movement crisp for the Boilermakers. Better Gets rotation Edie by back UConn. Inside. Three for Purdue, no good. How about Diara? Excuse me, that's Samson Johnson boxing out Edie, but Edie is able to tip it to Gillis. And now Gillis is fouled on the floor, will head to timeout. And when, when we return from timeout, it will be baseline out of bounds for Purdue. We will pay off this super chat in just a second, but we do have to show some love to our sponsor on today's live show, and that is Prize Picks. Head over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS or just download the app and input code CLNS to get a first deposit match up to $100. The number one daily fantasy sports app there is, and when basketball is being played at the highest level like it is tonight, you don't want to watch the game without playing prize picks, the best daily fantasy sports app there is. Join over 3 million users today, and all you got to do to have fun, pick more or less than on 2-6 to six player stat projections, and you could watch the winnings roll in. You can now turn, win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app. Want to play alongside some of your favorite players in the Prize Picks community like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley? Well, you can. You can find their community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in Prize Picks community each week. Unfortunately, I'm not big enough to make the community plays But tab. you're still one of my favorite Prize Picks players. You know, I appreciate that, Smitty. My picks tonight, I took the less than on Zach Eady, 24 points. He's got 11 I'm already starting to sweat a little bit. <laughs> Tristan Newton, more than 15 and a half. He's got five. I like that start to the day. Mason Gillis, five and a half more than. Hasn't taken a shot yet. We'll see how he progresses throughout this game. And then more than on Stefan Castle, who has two rebounds and two assists. So I actually like where I'm at there on the 18 and a half more than points, rebounds, and assists. You can take picks like these and others at prize picks. Like I said, you can win up to 100 times. With a $10 entry, sometimes if you pick four or more, I'm just going to win 10 to win 100, hopefully, if I get this correctly today. But get started today. Download the app, code CLNS, or go in the live chat and use that link 
prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS to get a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. That easy. All right, Alec. All we, right, Alec. We got to pay it off with a. We got we to gotta owe you some stuff. We appreciate the donation. We appreciate the support. And we'll go big screen for it, too, for you. Uh, I am going to pour my entire beer into here. Happy Dad. And then I am going to give you a nice little chug here. Smitty's going to join me. He's got the shotgun. Got the beer bong. When you're ready, you're ready. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that was cold. Close battle there between Smitty and I. Also, take a shot, too. We'll get real Liddy on here for you, Al. Appreciate it, man. As we're almost back to action. What's up, Wanda? Ugh. Nothing like taking a shot and taking down a happy dad all in the span of 10 seconds. <laughs> we, we have a lot of game left. Uh, actually, 31 minutes of game action remaining. So, hey, you guys can keep sending in big, big fat super chats, and we'll get, we'll get uh, pretty Liddy by the end of this one. All right, Purdue ball. Mason Gillis has it top of the key, gets it over to Lawyer. Now finds Smith, top of the key. Over to Gillis, inside, and they're going to call a foul. Samson Johnson holding Zach Eady inside, who is fighting for a position. I believe, excuse me. Sorry, that's what happens when you chug beer. Um, I believe that is actually Samson Johnson's second foul. It is, and Donovan Klingon will quickly check back in. Fix that X. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Braden Smith inside. Floater. Good. He finally scores in Arizona. <laughs> it took a while, but he did. Off the glass there. Soft touch. Both teams shooting high clip here. Purdue 8 of 13. UConn 7 of 13. Spencer has it on the left side. Swings it over to Newton. Newton. Defender on his back. Pull up Jay. Too strong. Rebound inside by the Boilermakers. They're looking to push. Raiden Smith, elbow jumper. He saw one fall. Doesn't get another one to fall. Heat check after one made layup already. <laughs> uh, let's see if they look inside the Klingon here. They get it to him at the top of the key. Back pass to Diara. Diara rejected by Edie. Oh, Up nice. ahead to Lawyer. Lawyer, he's blocked by Caravan. Each team tra trading blocks. It's going to result in a wide open corner three for Diara. That is true. UConn back up by three. Wow, this is an exciting ball game. We got a block party. We got threes flying. It's been good, good ball so far. Oh Halfway my. through the first half. Three threes for UConn already. Braden Smith gets downhill. Drop off to Edie. His layup fouled by Diara. Edie's going to go to the line for two. He made his first free throw today when he got an and one. We'll see if he can go two for two here. He's about a 68, 70% free throw shooter. As Edie goes to the line here, can we, ha can we get, we have over 700 people in the chat right now. Can we get to 200 likes before the end of the half? I want to see if you guys got it, got it in you. Edie a little strong on that free throw. As Hurley will go to his bench, Stefan Castle checks back in. So does Jalen Stewart, making his first appearance into the ball game. Cam Spencer will take a seat on the bench for Dan Hurley's Huskies. Come on, folks, hit your thumbs up icon. Let's get the 200 likes, over 750 people watching. We're live here for free, breaking down the game for you. If more of you like this video as Edie converts the second free throw, we could, even, we could almost double the size of the party that we got going. In, the, in tonight's chat. Diara has been effective so far for UConn off the bench with seven points. Klingon's got it at the top of the key. He's a very willing and able passer. They get it back over to Newton, coming off of a curl, back out to Stewart. Stewart inside, drop off to Klingon, lay up too strong. See, that's, the t that's where Klingon needs to grow if he wants to be a viable NBA prospect. He can't be missing those layups. That was too easy inside. Braden Smith easy. gets downhill. A lot of contact. 
banks it home and flexes to the crowd, and we're back even at 21. Boy, does Matt Painter have to be relieved that Braden Smith showed up to work today. Braden Smith has provided some good scoring opportunities with his playmaking as well as his actual score. Neither team is even led by two possessions so far today. Seven lead changes so far. Playing it at the top, gets it over to Castle. Five on the shot clock. Castle's going to fire a three. It comes up short. Edie gobbles up the board and will get it to the guard, Braden Smith. Pick and roll with Kaufman Wren. Inside the Wren, scary foul as Diara knees Kaufman Wren in the head. Both players look to be okay. Could this potentially be looked at? I didn't see the first look. Not looked at as flagrant, just accidental. Nah, yeah, it's not going to be flagrant. That is the sixth foul called on the Huskies so far. Purdue's only had two whistles on them so far. Boilermakers will be in the bonus for the rest of the first half. Eight and a half minutes left to go. And talk about a foul. Lance Jones whistled for an illegal screen. That's his second say, personal. That, that should be his second too, yeah. So he'll have to go take a seat on the bench. Foul trouble for UConn. Hassan Diara, two. Samson Johnson, two. And now Lance Jones joins the party with two fouls. And just like that, Hyde is going to take him out of the ball game for Matt Painter. So two on Diara for UConn and two on Lance Jones for Purdue. Two teams that aren't the deepest in college basketball, but they have enough talent. Yeah, they talent. only go about seven, maybe eight for UConn. Spencer inside. Swings it over to Stewart. It's a turnover. Here comes Braden Smith looking to give U Purdue the lead. Good transition defense by the Huskies. Now in the Edie. Right hook for Edie is good. <laughs> How do these go, man? Zach Edie has just been dominating today. He's got 14 points. West Lafayette, Indiana is jumping for joy in Mackey Arena for every Zach Edie bucket. Klingon, top of the key, gets it over to Spencer. Spencer now to Castle. Pick and roll. Castle, baseline, kicks it out to Spencer. Spencer now inside. Back to Castle, corner three. Doesn't go. Good box out by Kaufman Red. Now Purdue looks to take their largest lead of the game. Like I mentioned, Kaufman Red, not the biggest scorer, but he affects the game in so many ways. Jumper for Smith can't go, and he still can't find his stroke from deep. Had a couple layups, but that's about it. No buckets or points for UConn in three minutes. That changes with a Tristan Newton layup inside, taking it to Zach Eady. He's now got seven. And like I mentioned before, Purdue's guards are so patient down low, trying to get the best look available. That time, Newton hanging and getting the shot over the outstretched arms of Zach Eady. Raiden Smith, that's a hard screen. They don't call it. Into, that's a walk. It is a walk. Zach Eady walks with it, a travel, clearly little shuffle feet there as he caught the ball. And we're going to go to another timeout on the floor as we hit our under eight for the first time today. 900 people watching as we're tied at 23 with 6.50 to go in the first half. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. 900 people watching. Over 11,000 people have tuned in so far, and we're on the road to 370,000 subscribers. I mean, how we, electric would it be if we hit that tonight? Can we get there today? I don't know, Jim. We'd have to pick up 727, but the first thing we should try to do is get to 369,000 300. Can we pick up 25 subscribers during this time out? We put out two videos on a daily basis. We go live for all of the big events, Final Four, National Championship, NFL Draft, NFL Free Agency, NBA Draft, NBA Free Agency, NBA Postseason, NBA Finals. We are going to be here for everything you need in the sports world. So hit the sub button. Join us today. I promise you, you will not regret it. we got a great staff here at Chat Sports. I mean... I have nothing to add. You couldn't have said it any better. Join the family. Become a real one. Subscribe to the channel. Red button. But I also put a link in the chat as well if that makes things easier for you guys. That'll prompt you to subscribe to the channel. As UConn and Purdue are knotted up. With 6.50 to go here in the first half. 
Oh, man. This has been a good national championship so far. Up and down action. Uh, high level shot making. Good defense inside by Klingon and Edie. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's delivered on all angles so far. Game's been fantastic, man. It, it, it really has had everything you've wanted. Now, earlier in the show, we had a $100 super chat roll in to the stream. And, I mean, that was unbelievable. Uh, me and Roly got down with a beer bong shotgun race for you guys. If you want to be like our good buddy Alec, who sent in that $100 super chat earlier, you don't have to go for the full Benjamin. But any super chat gets your username and any message that you'd like to throw on the donation on screen for a shout out five dollars we're drinking some beers tonight having a couple brews and uh we're sipping on those five dollars is a beers cheers to you ten dollars we're taking shots Rolly's going to the patron zone i'm actually thinking of pulling out the fireball soon enough and getting real wild here on tonight well i'll stream. tell you what alec lewis is getting wild oh dollar super, super chat. chat tonight's mvp without a doubt and this man is just coming with a bang tonight for one of the biggest games of the year in all of sports. Shout out to Alec Lewis. We will have another super chat men or super beer bong battle when we go to our next timeout at the under four. But we are about to get back in action. Danny Hurley was not happy with the non-call on the Zach Eady screen. It looked moving. They didn't call it. But he was called for a travel. Zach Eady's going to take a seat on the bench. Caleb first in for Purdue. And that seemed like a bad idea as they get it to Klingon right away. And one for Kling Kong. He'll go to the line, look to put UConn up by three. Zach Eady out. Immediately go inside, get an easy layup. Wonder how long Eady will stay on the bench. <laughs> Shout out to our guy Joey DeLuca as well with the $1 super chat. We appreciate you, Joey. Joey DeLuca, the one man, the, real one. the myth, the legend. Klingon goes perfect at that free throw trip. So he converts the three-point play, and the Huskies back up by three. About six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Neither team has had a two-possession lead so far. Let's see if UConn can get a stop and score to make it happen. Lawyer running layup, no good. They're going to call Kaufman Red on a foul here on the rebound. He went up and over trying to get that tip in. Ended up grabbing some UConn jersey, and the official saw it, said, let's go the other way. Over the back whistled, and just like that, Purdue has basically evened up the free throw game as they have picked up the last three fouls. Now five for the game, UConn at six. Zach Eady already checking back into the game. He's rested 33 seconds in the previous two games, and, well, I think it was less than on that trip right there. Castle to Klingon. Klingon spinning, reverse layup on Edie. I don't know if that got blocked or he just missed it, I but think either Kaufman way, Redman it's no got a good. Piece of it. Here comes Smith now the other way for the Boilermakers. Pick and roll with Edie. Back out to Lawyer, who's yet to get in the scoring column for Purdue. That change. Oh, no, it does not. I thought that was going to fall. It doesn't. Edie tips it back up and in. UConn is irate. Thinking that ball was still on the cylinder, I, I, and I actually think they I have thought a case. it was. I thought it was still on the cylinder for just a teeny tiny second. Edie gets credited with the two, though. He's Back up to sixteen. Up, yeah, up to sixteen points. I, I tell you what, he got away with one there. Caravan hands it off to Spencer. Pick and roll with Klingon. Spencer loses the handle. Bumped. Fouled. Bucket doesn't count. Jeffrey Anderson waves it off. Says the foul on the deck. Oh, show Dan Hurley. He's got to be fuming. Hurley, as animated as a coach as you will find on the sideline. Ah, but he's just making calls out to his team. Keeping a little cool comic collected there. That foul will put now UConn into the bonus as they have it on the baseline here with a one-point lead. Five and a half to go in the half. They get it to Newton. Newton drives left to Klingon at the elbow. Klingon push shot over Edie. Gets the soft touch himself. Lead back up to three for UConn. It's never been larger than that, but it feels like it's been hovering at that point all night long. Klingon now up to seven points as he's not backing down to this fight against Zach Eady tonight. Honestly, a little shocked at the offensive output that Klingon's had here in this first I half. I agree. Eady one-on-one -on -one with Klingon, backing him down. Right hook. That one doesn't fall. 
Box out by Caravan is perfect. Kaufman Wren goes flying out to the baseline past the little media camera people. It will be Husky Ball with five minutes to go in the half. Caravan and Kaufman and Wren. Not going to be people who show up on the stat sheet often tonight, but they are just battling one another for every single rebound. That will be an underrated aspect of tonight's game. Two absolute glue guys for both teams. Tristan Newton back the other way for the Huskies. It's their starting lineup right now. Great back cut by Newton. UConn found him, and now the Huskies have their largest lead of the game at five points. It's 30-25. First two-possession lead for either team tonight. It's a 9-2 run for the Huskies. Could this be a run that UConn goes on to open up this game? Kaufman run inside. Left hook over Caravan. No good. Rebound off Klingon. It will stay with Purdue. Nine on the shot clock. As we got a $10 super chat from Garrett Ringy, so that's a shot in the next timeout as well. He threw a little super chat with a little super emoji sticker. guy going. Hippo character riding his chair. That's really quite fast. the description. Oh, they 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 give it to you. That's a shot, though. We'll do we'll honor that at the next timeout as Appreciate well. Appreciate you, Garrett. They get it to Edie off the inbound, right hook. From the free throw line, no good. So Edie's missed his last two shots now. Castle out and running. Trailing Caravan. Deep three. That's too strong. Klingon fought for the board, but Edie comes away with it. Edie up to seven boards here in this first half. He's looking at a double-double on the game. Under four to go now. Three of eight from three is the Huskies. Purdue's only attempted one three. It didn't make it. UConn's play great in perimeter defense. Lawyer inside, Should stripped, be... off his knee. Spencer providing the defense. And it will be heading back to the Huskies, a turnover for the Boilermakers. And that will bring us to our final media timeout of the first half. 3.49 to go here as UConn has a five-point lead. So we'll do the same thing we did just the, the last time we honored the Super Chat. We were going to tell you about our sponsor, on today's show, and then we'll have some fun with Alec Lewis's Super Chat as well as Garrett's. But first, I want to make sure the 1,000 people in the chat are hooked up with prize picks. The best daily fantasy sports app there is, and they can give you a first deposit match up to $100 when you visit the app and input code CLNS. Why is prize picks so much fun? Well, let me tell you. Well, it makes watching these high-intensity sports outings and events way better. Playoff action is about to get started in the NBA and NHL. So win up to 100 times your money today on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the postseason. And the reason why I love prize picks, well, you can really combine anything from basketball to hockey to League of Legends and everything in between. You can have LeBron, Caitlin Clark, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in the same entry. How about that? So get started today with prize picks. Download the app and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. That's what I did for my entry today. Took the less on Zach Eady, 24 points. He's got 16, so it's a little bit dicey. Took the more than on Tristan Newton, 15 and a half points. I believe he's up to nine. Uh, he is up to, yeah, nine. So I'm liking where I'm there with Newton. Yeah, like that. More than on Gillis at five and a half. He's got none. We'll see if he can get something going. And then more than on 18 and a half for Stefan Castle. He has a combined, let's see here, he six. A, so that's not too bad. Not too bad. For Stefan Castle. He can get hot like a microwave. If I make all four right, I went up to 10 times my money, 10 to win 100. Like I said, download the app or go to the live chat and use prizepicks.com. Plus CLNS, that's the link, code CLNS, and then get that first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less, it's that easy. All, All right. right. I think we'll take uh, two shots now, and then we'll save the beer bong for halftime. Okay, I think I, I, that's, 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 a good, that's a good way to put it. So I'll take a shot for Garrett. And a shot for Alec. Shot for Alec, but we also have a... Beer bong race coming up at the half for Alec Lewis. Stay as well. tuned for that because it was close last time. Yeah, we just uh, we couldn't get in the beer bong race because we're about to return to action. First half progressing, I'd say pretty nicely here. Tip yeah. off at eight twenty. It's nine o'clock or eight twenty CT. 
We're on the set. We're at Central Time Zone as we are in Dallas, Texas. It's nine o'clock now, so projecting to be a 45, 50 minute half. That's standard. So Luke, I'm a big fella. I'm six two, two o four. Um, I can hold my liquor. I can hold my liquor. That's for sure. I'm definitely banged up when I leave the studio. Sometimes that's why we Uber. That's why we walk to work. Yep. Shoelace Express. We're back in action here with under four to go. And UConn basketball, largest lead of the night, is what they have right now. We'll see if they can extend it here. Possession arrow is to Purdue, just so you know. Could prove useful here. Castle has it, drives inside, hangs, floater, gets a very friendly roll, and the Huskies now up seven as Castle, the freshman who's likely going to be a top ten selection in June, Gets on the board for the first time tonight. Both teams have been fairly efficient inside the painted area tonight. Purdue hasn't made more than one shot in five minutes. Looking to change that is Braden Smith, and he finally connects on a jumper. He's now got six points for the Boilermakers as the lead is down to five. Braden Smith, three of six from the field after that nightmare game on Saturday against NC State. He's rebounded nicely, making three of his last four shots. Castle, top of the key, gets a screen, drives left, by baseline. That's a charge, and that is an interesting call, to say the least. Don't love that one. Lance Jones took a chance with two fouls. i got to be honest, I think he was moving. I think that's a block. He was shuffling his feet there. Unless they're going to say it's oh, on the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he absolutely extended the arm there. And I was actually up, up near the face of Lance Jones. I think that was a flop, if I'm going to be honest. I don't like that call. Mason Gillis on the left side. Gets it over to ED, top of the key. He'll hand it to Braden Smith. Smith thought about a triple, pump faked. Ends up resetting the offense. He was double. want to get it to ED here. He was double originally, couldn't find somebody. Said it's going to be a right wing three on the move, and he connects. Braden Smith having the game of his life. Nine points. He's gotten hot here late. Night and day from the semifinal to the national championship tonight. And now UConn is going to burn their first time out of the game with 2.09 to go in the first half. Their seven-point lead cut down to two thanks to Braden Smith going on a personal 5-0 run. Man, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it, but he really struggled against the NC State Wolfpack on Saturday, bouncing back very nicely in the first 20 minutes of this game. Absolutely. I mean, we got a barn burner here. And what this allows us to do, actually, instead of going to halftime waiting to take this beer bong race, we're able to do it right now. Let, so let, let, me, let me go get up. my uh, another beer. I'm already out. It's crazy. You only brought in one. That's I brought why in two. I'm beer cheers in the other one. Oh, gotcha. That's, that's, rookie, no, that's rookie stuff from Tyler Smith. I wouldn't expect anything less from Tyler Smith. Um, Alex says, what's the biggest donation we've ever had? I'm actually not sure what the biggest donation we've ever had on – chat sports channel is i could tell you the biggest donation we've ever had on any channel is a 500 hundred dollar super chat i'm also pretty sure that youtube caps you out at 500 dollars. so alec if you even wanted to go even crazy to that i don't think they'd allow you to send anything more than 350 at one time because they do cap you out at 500 i believe that's what i believe alec but if you send in a, a 350 to get to 500, I tell you what, Alec, you said you've been watching for a long time. We'd set, we'll hook you up with a, well, I don't, well, definitely a shirt, definitely a shirt, chat sports real one shirt, because you are a real one. You're already a real one. But Charles, we had food today, don't you worry? We had dinner. Oh yeah. Yep, got the grains in. So got the got, grains. Got, got the grains. Lot, got a lot keeping us down here. All right, Smitty, you ready? Round two. Let's do it. Cheers to Alec. To Alec. Let's do it. Ooh, I think somebody might have got me on that one. It's really cold. Oh Alec, the problem with the hoodie, I don't even think we, I don't think we have hoodies available. That's the issue. Um. Alec, if you get to 500, we will send you. We'll, how about, you know what? 
Will we get him like we'll a, do it. We'll like do a... It. Alec, what's your favorite sports team? Let us know what your favorite sports team is. Might be able to Alec, what's your favorite sports team? Might be able to hook you up. I want to see also if, if the rest of the chat could get us going here. Lions fan, Alec, if that's your favorite sports team, you send a $350 super chat to cap us up at 500 on the night. We or for you personally, we'll send you a custom Lions jersey. Custom Lions jersey, anything you want could be a could be a player, could be your name, yeah. whatever you'd like. We'll send you a custom Lions jersey. How about that? Can we get to 300 likes by halftime? We got two minutes to get it done. We need 64 likes to get there. Over 1,100 people in tonight's stream. Let's see if we could do it here in the closing two minutes. All right, good set by UConn out of the timeout, and Tristan Newton hits a little floater from the elbow to quiet that. 5-0 run Purdue was on, so the lead's back up to four. Purdue guards have been getting, letting Tristan Newton get to his right hand a lot tonight, and I think they need to kind of close that up if they want to limit his scoring in the second half. Newton's up to 11 points on the game. Both teams shooting 50% or better. Edie inside. Good defense by Klingon, forcing a miss there. Offensive rebound by Gillis. Jump ball, though. Gonna like I mentioned just before we went to that timeout. It will stay with Purdue. Possession arrow favors the Boilermakers, but there is only six seconds left on the shot clock. All right, Alec, no pressure, Alec. What you've done today is also more than enough. Absolutely. You wanted to get crazy. Lawyer to inbound, looking to get it to Edie, will burn a timeout. They were going to probably use a timeout before the half anyway because you can't take more than three into the half. So Purdue will use a timeout. Create a set here with six seconds on the shot clock as they trail by four. I like what Smitty's head's at. Let's get the 300 likes before halftime. We are now 43 away. Hit that thumbs up. Come on. 43 away. I know we can do it. I, I, there's more than enough people who have not yet hit that thumbs up icon. It's like when you enter somebody's home as a guest. Got to kick off your shoes first. Make sure you're here and, uh, and present. So hit the thumbs up icon. Helps us get more people in, the, in tonight's stream as well. We want this chat room popping. We want everybody having a good time. We want you know more super chats to roll in as well. We want more Alex, Alex in the chat. Tate asked, Help us what get was there. the Vegas point spread? It closed that six and a half in favor of the Huskies. Yep. I mean, they've won every game. But they've won. They've played 11 straight NCAA tournament games with a win, all 11 by double digits. They can make it 12 and have two straight tournament runs of Wins all by double digits, which would just be psychopath stuff. Which would never on, happen again, by the way. Based on what I've seen, um, as we see a wild old man with a Purdue haircut, I like that. Um, the Alabama game was really close until it wasn't. They get it into Gillis, who's blocked by Caravan. That's Caravan's second block of the night. Now it's fantastic defense by the Huskies outside of the timeout. Three blocks for each team tonight. Spencer has it left side. Gets it over to Newton, who's played a really good ball game for the Huskies. I believe he was the Big East player of the year. Loose ball. It's going to be a jump ball, and it will go to UConn. So it will stay with the Huskies. Nine seconds to go on the shot clock. Barring another tie-up, Purdue will open the second half with the ball. D. Lee, yes, I am from Rochester. D. Lee, I don't know where you remember that from, but credit to you, D. Yeah, I didn't say it on today's stream. I might have oh, I said something about Jeffrey Anderson in the 585, so maybe that's where you're getting that from. But hmm. if not, you have either great memory from a different stream, or uh, I don't remember. I don't think he's a Heat report viewer. So Got I, 10 likes left until we get to 300. I know you guys can do it. Got a minute left. Eight likes. Come minute on. And eight, minute and eight left, so it's getting sweaty. Newton inbounding, can't find anyone, gets it to Klingon finally. Klingon's oh, going to no. launch a three. Oh, it didn't go, but Cam Spencer on the offensive glass. He's trying again. Gets another opportunity for UConn. Castle gets the screen from Klingon, resets it back out to Newton. Newton now driving, hanging, bank, no good, but Castle tip is true. The freshman making something happen. Huskies up six. I'll tell you what, though, Klingon's shot form, it's not, it's not that bad. No, I, I, I wasn't. I, I, it looked like he had, he had taken him before. 
Oh, and then Castle with the steal, read the eyes of Braden Smith. And now the Huskies, there's a three-second differential between shot clock and game clock. And they could take a six-point lead or more into the half. The largest it's been for UConn tonight was seven. See if they could make that eight or nine going into the break. Newton has it. They'll hold for one. Under 10 to go in the first half. Newton over to Spencer. Spencer driving. Pump fake. Step through. Floater. Too strong. Rebound to Lawyer. He won't get up a shot. Oh, he did. Oh, my God. That's kind of did not go. And will go into the half with the Huskies leading 36-30. to UConn has been the best team in basketball all year long. Purdue not not far behind them, and UConn will hold a six-point lead as we head to the half. And we got to 300 likes, oh, past go. 369, 300 subscribers. Very nice. Fantastic job by everybody in the chat. Kevin Carrera says, Klingon, best player ever. Well, he's played well. He, I, you know what? He's played very good, but he has developed a little bit of an offensive game before we start throwing goat allegations around. Even though Edie finished the first half with 16 points, Edie started the game with 16 points on 6 of 8 shooting, and that 16 points came in the first 12 minutes of the game. Yeah. In the final 8 minutes of the half, Edie only well, didn't score, and, excuse me, no, I have, I have this ass backwards, but either way. I know he had like 11 points in the first 5 minutes, so he was held over like 5 over the last 10 at least. But he, either way, though. I know for a fact Edie did start the game 6 of 8 from the field. Mm. So he finishes the half 1 of 4. He's 7 of 12. And he did not score for the final 5, 6 minutes of that half. But here's the part that is the most important, I think. And I said this in the pregame. Edie, so far at halftime, only has 5 rebounds with one of them being an offensive rebound. If you're able to limit Edie to 9, 10 rebounds... That bodes well. He's been averaging 16 rebounds a game for the tournament. And he averaged 13 rebounds for the entire season. So if you hold him to 9-10 rebounds in this ball game and don't let him really get on the re or the offensive glass a lot, that bodes well for the Huskies. And it's probably the reason why they hold a six-point lead at the half. Yeah. I mean, what what do you cool, think man. Purdue? has to do to kind of bring this game back in their favor? Does it have to be Edie getting his things going? Well, they have to prevent the dribble drive from UConn's goal. They're, they're letting Tristan Newton get to his spot virtually every time he, he has the ball in his right hand. Two, the, here, here's the three-guard lineup that UConn puts out there in the starting lineup. You know what? I'll even extend it to four. Newton, 11 points on four of eight shooting. Cam Spencer, seven points on three of six shooting. Hassan Diar off the bench, seven points on three or four shooting. Stefan Castle, four points on two or five shooting. The four Connecticut guards have just gotten anything they've wanted, combining for 29 of the team's 36 points, and they're all shooting as a team, as those four group, 30 or above 50%. So they have just dominated the Purdue guards. Braden Smith has done some nice things, having nine points, but Lance Jones only has three. Fletcher Lawyer has zero. So as what I forecasted in the pregame, the Connecticut guards are just outplaying Purdue's, and that could not happen. It was going to happen, but if you were Purdue trying to win this game, yes, Edie was going to outplay Klingon in this game, even though I thought Klingon was going to put up a good fight. But you needed your guards to keep it close in that guard battle. They have yet to do so, and that's why you trail by six. You mentioned that in in Saturday's uh, after Saturday's action as well. You know, you know, you were worried about how the UConn guards would fare. Oh uh, well, not were you basically worried about how the Purdue guards would fare defensively against the UConn guards? And we've seen that they've kind of been futile so far in their attempts. Yeah. Shout uh, out, uh, Alec. By the way, I never got your shot, my shots in for you, and Garrett. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a shot of fireball for you guys. We at the half are going to go to sub-only mode. So if you want to comment in the chat where you have to be a subscriber, and how about this? We'll go to who you got. Okay. We've seen 20 minutes of play between Purdue and UConn. The Huskies lead by six. It's fairly tight. Who do you think will win this game? If you still think it's going to be UConn, type the UConns. If you think Purdue wins the second half by seven or better, which 
It's going to be hard for me to fathom UConn losing a half of basketball by seven, to be honest. I know it happened once against Creighton, right, um, earlier on in the Big East. But they have to I lose the half of basketball I by seven. I literally can't see Purdue losing a half of basketball by seven. But you can see, uh, prove me wrong. We're in subscriber-only mode, so be a subscriber and comment down below, UConn or Purdue. Um, Alec, you said, how would I get the jersey? Just wasn't sure how that worked. You would follow me on Twitter or Instagram. We'd DM. I'd get your information, and we'd set something out to you. We'd well, I'm going to step aside for just a quick second, literally like five seconds. I'll be right back. What would you say? I'm going to step aside for like okay. five seconds. No big deal. Uh, no big deal there for Smitty. Um, so let me know. We'll give shout-outs. Make sure you are subscribed in subscriber-only mode for the half here. Wyatt says subs only. GR says UConn, let's go. Gamer, UConn. Charles Wood says Purdue. Wanda, UConn. Alex says Purdue by four. So wins the second half by 10. Wyatt is going with Purdue. Sam, Purdue. Joey DeLuca and Jim Carroll saying UConn. What's up? It's not Jim Carroll. Joey DeLuca, UConn. AE, UConn. Riley Shea, Huskies. EC13 has been subscribed for a year. Enjoy your streams. Go Huskies. Appreciate you, EC. Riding with the Huskies. Oh, see how long this half is. You never know with these guys. You never know with these guys. Probably like 15, 20 minute half. Um, as Smitty gets back, though, I do want to highlight the highlighted matchup of today's game, which was always going to be. Donovan Klingon and Zach Eady inside. Yeah. It was initially won by Zach Eady, who had 16 points um, really quickly in this ball game. But Klingon did an excellent job in the final five or six minutes of that half to battle with Eady, make life difficult. Eady finishes with 16 points in the half, shooting seven of 12. He finished the half on one of four scoring. And the thing that has impressed me so far, and even though Edie has gotten his own with 16 points, that Klingon is not used to playing a lot of minutes. Him and Samson Johnson have been an excellent one-two tandem at that center spot for the Huskies this year. And then obviously last year they had Adama Sanogo and Klingon as the one-two punch at that center spot. But Samson Johnson picked up two fouls immediately and only played about four minutes in that first half. Klingon played... I want to make sure I get the minutes correct here. They don't have it, of course. I don't know why. I think Klingon played about 16, 15 minutes in that first half. Klingon does not play 30 minutes often. So he's on pace to do so. So we'll see how his conditioning holds up as we approach the second half. And that's a stark contrast to Zach Eady, who's only missed 33 seconds over the last two games. He's an Iron Man out there, which is kind of a testament. I didn't realize... Zach Eady plays two, almost a full 40 most of the time. I mean, he's hard to miss out there, but, man, yeah, he's doing, durable for, big for a guy games, that big. He's playing 35, 40 minutes. Yeah, 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 for sure. And barring any foul trouble, which he's he's not in right now, right? He only only has one. One, yep. Okay, so he, he's good to go. I'm, I can't imagine him coming out for uh, much Actually, at I'm all. Actually, wrong on that. He has zero. Oh, so he's, oh, he ain't even coming out the entire second half. Zach Eady looking at playing 30, not, 39 plus minutes, right? He was out for less than a minute. For that little break he took. Yeah. Alec, uh, it'd probably be better if you hooked up with my Instagram or Twitter. You could follow me at um, – I actually don't know my own handle. I can uh, – do you want Instagram or – hold on. I just want to make sure my handle's right. You could either follow me at on Instagram because it's probably easier that way if we end up getting – or you end up sending in that super chat and want to do it that way. Um, my Instagram, I'll type it in the chat if – Anyone wants to give me a follow. I don't really post content over there, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, Nick Roloff9 is the IG handle in the chat. If you want to follow me on Twitter, Nick underscore Roloff, that I am very active on, putting out um, college basketball content, NFL, NBA. So that if you want to follow your boy Roly on socials, that's, that, that's how you can. Oh, yeah! Give give full give Rolly a follow on Instagram. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Don't hate it. Someone Winds of Summer it. saying, "I just signed on. Can you handle a Boston sports guy?" Well, listen, Winds of Summer twenty two came to the right place because I'm a Boston Celtics fan. 
Not as much the other Boston sports, but hey, go Seas. Looking for Banner 18. I am uh, a helper here on the Boston Celtics Today channel that we have here at Chat Sports. So we'll be going live for every game the rest of the regular season, plus every game in the postseason over there. Shameless plug. Uh, as will Rolly on the uh, on the Heat Report. Yeah, Heat Report. Yeah, it's a big one. Alec Lewis did give me a follow on IG. Shouts so, uh, out to him. Alec, if you uh, if you wanted to get nuts and send in the three hundred fifty dollars super chat, uh, we'll hook you up, man. And now that I got your IG, we we'd be able to figure it out over there. Oh, it it would be you know it's it's, it's set in stone now if if that goes down. You guys, you guys are you guys are homies. You guys are you know mutual followers on the yeah, on the IG. Yeah. How about that? So let's get a let's get a live look in on how many subs we've gained over the past couple of minutes. 13, 14 subs. 13, 14 subs. Come on. Over a thousand people watching. We are in sub only mode. So if you want to partake in the chat, comment, and uh, create conversation, gotta be subscribed to do so. I will uh I'll throw the sub link in the chat if that makes things easier for you guys. Time we man thing go heat. My man, time man. Time man yesterday sucked. But we'll losing be back the, again tomorrow. Losing the Pacers? We always are. Ugh. We always but, are. Hey, I guess the, the Heat like to rise to the occasion there. In the yeah, we're going to be in the plan. Again. Be in the plan, in all likelihood. But we got more important things to talk about. No one cares about the NBA right Nobody now. Nobody cares we about the NBA. Care about Not until, one, uh, t until I've already watched one shining moment after it comes out later tonight. Then I can shift my focus to the NBA. But for now... We still got action in State Farm Stadium. The Luca, it's up in the, it's up top in the uh, chat. It, that's the handle is up there. All right, Smitty, if Purdue wants to come back in this game, what yeah. do they have to do? I mean, Fletcher Lawyer's got to get going. That's for sure. Um, zero a donut so far for him. Braden Smith's got to keep doing what he's doing. He's kind of come alive, been a completely different player than we saw against NC State just a few days ago. And uh, you know, he's. Continue Zach Eady to stay out of foul trouble. Make sure he's durable. Make sure he limits Donovan Klingon inside, who we've seen have a little bit more of an offensive output in the first half than he normally does for this UConn team. He even attempted a three ball, which was nuts. So there, that's going to have to go down as... come true. I'm a 20-year-old from Michigan. I want to make people as happy as possible. I'm trying my best to work hard for my dad. I hope to make a world a happier place by putting a smile on people's faces. Thank you. Alec, no, thank you. I will get in the DMs after I mean. today's game and the live show, and we'll set something up on the way we can hook you up. And we appreciate the donation, my friend. It means a lot. And uh, I'm smiling ear to ear. Yeah, I'm kind of speechless right now. I, I mean, honest. oh my goodness. Everybody, you know, everybody spam in the, the chat. W's. Everybody spam Alex, spam W's, spam whatever you want. Get the chat absolutely nuclear for our good friend Alec Lewis. I am Shouts go out grab, to you. Uh, another drink for myself. I'm going to have to do the same. You want to just I'll grab, just grab, me? Your, just grab yeah. me one? Yeah. So just, you want to go. You solo here for a second. Yeah, no uh, problem. That. Oh my goodness, oh, Alec. I'll man, take a Alec. shot for you while Rolly's gone. Speechless. Oh my goodness. Speechless, man. Wow. Wow, Alec Lewis. Absolutely taking over tonight's stream. Time and saying W, Alec. Riley Shea. GR. Joey DeLuca saying God bless Alec. God bless you, my man. Honestly. G GR saying Alec a legend. There aren't enough words to describe Alec Lewis and what he's done for tonight's live stream. Absolutely. I mean, he's getting us hammered, getting us live, and j the juice is flowing for this second half. I can't wait. Alec Lewis, you're just making this stream even better than it than it's already been tonight. Um, shout out to you, my man. I, I, I can't believe this. I know, Dodgers, we need the gong in here, right? 
Oh, we're not in the we're not in the uh, the Raiders report studio right now, so we don't have the gong on hand. But man, Alec Lewis, you're getting hooked up. Not only, I mean, not only are you gonna get the custom jersey, we're gonna get you some chat sports swag as well. Whatever we got uh, here at the office, we're we're gonna send it to you, my man. I mean, unbelievable display tonight by Alec Lewis. I mean, I've forgotten about the basketball that we have to be played. Are you kidding me? America, I get paid for this? I mean, chat sports, it, it, it just brings together people of all, of all shapes and sizes, all creeds and, 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 and backgrounds for moments like this. This is awesome, baby. With a capital A! Wow. Capital A for Alec Lewis, because he's awesome, baby. Jin Jin saying, Alec, totally blessed. Joey Lucas said, I'm here until you sign off. We couldn't be more appreciative of you, Joey. Oh my goodness. Shit is getting real on tonight's Men's National Championship live stream. UConn leads Purdue by six at the half. We're partying for Alec Lewis at the halftime break. If you want to party like Alec Lewis partied, dollar sign next to the chat box to send it to Super Chat. We would be very appreciative of uh, any contributions, but man, I don't think anybody can take the MVP away from Alec Lewis. Yeah, you know, Smitty made mention of a gong. Well, I, in that time out, and when I was away getting drinks, did go grab the gong. For Alec Lewis, whenever someone gets the $500 in Super Chats for the evening, I appreciate you, big dog. <laughs> $350 super chat, $500 in total for the night. Like I said, I'll be in the DMs. We'll be in conversation after today's live show. We appreciate you for supporting the channel. Oh, man. Big dog. And uh, I did grab a beer That's for true. you. That's true. So we should, we should probably go back to the big cam. <laughs> Be go beer for you. I got my beer. Beer bongs. Bang for you. Alec, man. Unbelievable. Appreciate the support. Like I said, I'll, t I'll be in conversation with you tonight. Had to go steal the Chugs and Mitch flow from the Raiders report. Go steal the gong from uh, Studio A. It's worth it. It's a Where, worth it well worth it. Well worth it. All right. All right. I'm coming. I'm coming for blood this time. Okay. I think I I I was too lackadaisical the last year. That's race. fair. That's fair. This one's for Alec Lewis, man. I mean, who else but the legend? Ready? That's close. I think you got me. I'm about to cry. My eyes are so watery right now. <coughs> almost choked. I put my body on the line for that one, Alex. I, 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 feel like I, didn't even realize. I put my body on the line for that one, but oh, man. it's worth it for Alec Lewis. <coughs> All right, got to take a breather, folks. All right, we do have 1,200 people watching, though, and as fun as tonight's been, Thank you to Alec Lewis. I want to say it again. Oh, boy, you did really. Blood, sweat, and tears for Alec Lewis. Uh, Hopefully this dries up by the buzzer. Make sure you hit that thumbs up icon, folks, while we are at the half. We have 340 likes, but there's 1,200 people watching. That needs to improve. That but that needs to be better. What hit should that we thumbs up icon. Right We're live for free. We appreciate it. So hit that thumbs up icon, man. Let's get to, uh, can we get to 500 likes by the end of halftime? That should, I think that should be the goal. Totally possible. That now, should be the goal. We're 166 away, or 156 away, excuse me. I'm bad at math after a couple beers. It tends to happen. Tends to happen. Tends to happen. But hey, hit that thumbs up icon. We know not everybody can super chat, but hitting the thumbs up icon and getting things rolling for us is, uh, is just as valuable. Make sure you get that cord fixed. Oh, yeah, get the cord fixed. I don't know why I'm blanking. I'm, I, I, I'm staring at the, at the big old stain on my shirt right now. Not good. I mean, oh, what a stream okay. so far. All right, let's get the 500 likes, though. Let's come together as a group and get the 500 likes. Uh, we're 140 away. Now we're getting under there. 
get the 50, I want to get a 50% like rate. Right now we have not even close to that. We have 362 likes. 12, 28 people watching. I've we actually just gotten a, word and said, the boss has said we can't go live for the second half. We might have to cut this thing off halfway through if we can't get the 500 likes here. That can't happen. That definitely can't happen. That can't happen. We got to be what? Close to the second half being tipped off anyway? Yeah. Come on, folks. Hit that like. So time's, time's a ticking. Time's a ticking. The Luca knows it. Riley Shea knows it. Alec oh. Lewis says he's heading out for the night. Well, Alec, we appreciate everything you've done. Like I said, I'll be in the DMs after today's live show, after the game. Have a good night, Alec Lewis. Appreciate you once again, my friend. Have a nice night. I mean, what a legend. A legend. <laughs> Absolutely legend. A Maybe legend stop. send off. I mean, we, we appreciate you like no other, Alec. You made tonight's stream even more electric than it could ever be. 123 away. I think we got this. Come on, hit that thumbs up icon. We're about to get underway in Glendale, Arizona for the second half of this national championship game. UConn leads by six. The story of tonight's game has not been Zach Eady, in my opinion. It's actually been the guard domination from the Connecticut Huskies. Stephon Castle, Tristan Newton, Cam Spencer, Hassan Diara off the bench have just simply outplayed Braden Smith. Fletcher Lawyer, and Lance Jones, and if Purdue wanted to have any chance of winning this game, you needed to have your guards be on par with UConn's guards. And it hasn't been that way so far, which has resulted in the six-point deficit. So can they get it going in this second half? Purdue's also only made one three tonight. They're one of two. They haven't attempted many. They've tried to get it inside. Can Purdue knock down some shots from the perimeter to really – Stretch and threaten this UConn defense. Both, That's a question. Both teams are getting ready to take the floor. Um, both teams shooting pretty well from the field. 48% for UConn uh, and 46% for Purdue. So, you know, neither team's taking bad shots, um, going on the prolonged droughts. I know Purdue uh, had a couple minutes where they didn't, they didn't have a field goal. But um, neither team been particularly bad on offense for many stretches at all that first half. Hopefully they can both keep it up and get an exciting finish to what has been a pretty solid tournament. I mentioned the three-point shooting for Purdue. They have averaged eight made threes a game in this tournament. Like I said, only one. So will the law of averages prevail, or will they be continued to held down from three? We're back in Arizona for the start of the second half. Purdue will start with the basketball, which means possession arrow to the Huskies. First time we get a tie-up. Let us know who you got down in the chat, UConn or Purdue. We're taking off sub-only mode here in just a second. Oh, in the beginning of this half, there will be a foul called on Klingon. Klingon stayed relatively clean in the foul department in the first half. That is actually his first foul of the game. So both big men not really in foul trouble. Edie backing down Klingon, gets to the left hand, smokes the layup! Zach Eady cannot finish. Got a really good look and just bogeyed it. UConn gets bailed out there. Largest lead of the game for the Huskies has been seven. Spencer misses a mid-range shot. Offensive rebound by Klingon. Out to Newton. Three ball. Good. Huskies up nine. Largest lead of the game. UConn always goes on a run to put their opponents to sleep. Could it be to start the second half like it was against Illinois in the Elite or Elite Eight. That was a deep third ball. That, I mean, Newton's got unlimited range. Turnover! Ball on Zach. Oh, Purdue actually comes away with it. Braden Smith running floater. It went. Could, but it won't count. They call a foul on the floor beforehand. Reach in. I mean, that ball had to be got. I feel like Newton had an ability to grab it and just did not go for it. Something to monitor. Maybe maybe Purdue's a little hungrier getting to the basketball you, when it's uh, up I mean, for grabs. That was very, that was very interesting. All right, another opportunity for the Boilermakers. Two fouls whistled on the Huskies one minute into this half. Braden Pur Smith, pick and roll with Edie inside. Pump fake, drops it off to Edie. Great position inside. Edie smokes it again. Back-to-back -back misses by Zach Edie. He might have been surprised on how good a pos positioning he had there. Here come the Huskies. Snap back three by Newton. Oh, that would have set the Husky faithful on fire. 
Almost turned over by Purdue, but now it's going to result in a run out for the Boilermakers. Kaufman and Wren inside. Layup is good. Klingon wanted to travel, did not get it, so the lead's down to seven. Just like the first half, we've had some high energy basketball being played through the first two minutes of this ball game. That is second half. Sure. Loose with the basketball as well. Klingon at the top of the key. He's a really good distributor. Hands it off to Castle. Castle, free throw line jumper on a pull-up, too strong. Rebound by Lance Jones and Purdue as they look to cut into the seven-point deficit. Braden Smith gets a screen from Edie. Braden Smith probing, elbow jumper for him. That can't fall. Spencer with the board. That's one thing about UConn that's always impressive when I watch them. All five guys rebound. Good pass ahead to Castle for an easy layup who had position inside. UConn back up nine. Castle now up to six points for the Huskies, coming off a 21-point performance. Offensive foul called on Kaufman Wren, fighting with Caravan for position inside. First foul called on the Boilermakers this half. And UConn has a chance to get this game to a double-digit deficit for Purdue. Oh, come on. See, I, I, I have no skin in the fight, but, man, I want to see this have a close, tight finish. Purdue's going to have to get some stops and some scores. Caravan to Spencer to Newton. Corner three for the veteran. Can't fall. Rebound. Tipped out. Loose ball. Tristan Newton comes away with it. Newton to Castle. Castle, Eurostep. Bump. Oh, that's offensive. That's going to be a block called on Lance Jones. That is his third of the game. I don't know about that one. He was pretty set. Uh, was maybe a little bit of a lean. That's, that's what the official saw. That... The contact happened on the shoulder. Oh, definitely a little bit last second. Castle was, was Euro-stepping there. He was he was stationary, and then last second on that Euro, like you said, he, he gave his shoulder a tiny lean, and the referee saw it. Ball doesn't lie, as they do say in the game. Castle missing the first free throw, and Purdue will counter with a pair of subs. Like I said, Lance Jones now three fouls. He is an X factor for this three or team as he provides a lot of three point shooting. Castle having an all around game for the Huskies six points, four boards, three assists. Joey DeLuca saying Purdue is off tonight. Yeah, a lot of their offensive success has come inside. They've been struggling on jump shots and they really haven't taken a whole lot of threes. Been great perimeter defense by UConn as a pair of missed free throws there from the Huskies. Wow, ball really didn't lie on that one. Purdue now the other way, inside the ED, right hook, too strong. Oh my goodness! Hide from the rafters with a putback slam! Oh my goodness, what a putback dunk by Camden Hyde, who just checked in off the bench. Let's see if that provides some life for this Purdue team. Did I just miss the play of the game? Yes, you did. Spencer <laughs> looking to answer. Can't. Rebound. Another offensive board for the Huskies. Missed put back. Another offensive rebound. Third effort goes. The UConn Huskies just want it more right now, folks. And you mentioned Purdue attacking the offensive glass. I countered with UConn attacking the offensive glass, which they do. Edie inside. Good possession. Fouled by Klingon. So Zach Eady's going to go to the line for two. What a putback slam oh, that was by sick. Hyde. Purdue looking to come back in this one as they trail by nine. Under 16 timeout. 15.54 to go in the ball game. Wow. Zach Eady will have two free throws when we return to action. And in this TV timeout, I want to tell everyone about our sponsor on today's live show. That is... Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. Join more than 3 million users with Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. Well, all you got to do is pick more or less than on two or more player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players. 
take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. It's so simple. I can make picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds by picking just more than or less than on two or more player stat projections. I'm telling you, just pick more or pick less. It's that easy. My picks tonight are as followed. I'm um, doing a little check-in here on less than Zach Eady 24. He's still at 16, so it looked dead early, but we have a chance. More than on Tristan Newton, 15 and a half. He's got 14. I expect Newton to get another basket in tonight's game. I'm really sweating Mason Gillis more than five and a half. He just, has taken one shot. No points. Just two triples he need, though. Yeah. Could happen at any triples. moment. He could be a big swing. Big swing. Stephon Castle, the freshman, more than 18 and a half points, rebounds, assists. He's got eight points. Five rebounds, three assists. That's so he's at 16. 16. Feel Looking pretty good. confident about how that's going. So Maybe it should have been a flex play. Should have done a flex play. I did a, <laughs> plow, I did a power play to win 10 times my money, 10 to win 100. Flex play, if you didn't know what that means, it would have allowed me to get one of them wrong and still win money on the night. That's why prize picks are so awesome. It allows flexibility. New users get daily specials. Returning users get daily specials. Price picks the absolute best. So download the app today and use code CLNS to get a first deposit match up to $100. Or you can go to the description and live chat of today's stream. Click on that link, prizepicks.com slash CLNS, code CLNS to get a first deposit match up to $100. Shout out to Price Picks for sponsoring today's show. And we're back. Oh, man. Over 1,000 people watching. 31,000 people have checked in throughout the night. Shout out to everybody watching. It's been a great night so far. And if, you are, if you're new here, it's your first time at Chat Sports, tuning in along, me, myself, and Nick Roloff, consider subscribing to the channel. Post daily videos here about the hottest topics in the NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball, and basically anything that comes up. So you're going to want to stick with us here. We do live streams just like this. For big events like the NCAA tournament, NBA playoffs are coming up. So you guys are going to want to stick around and, uh, and be a part of what we have building here at Chat Sports. Great crew of guys here uh, analyzing sports daily. So subscribe to the channel. Zachy started the game 7 of 9 from the field. He's missed his last six shots. Samson Johnson into the game. He's guarding Edie. They've doubled Edie when Johnson oh, is the defender, and no. Edie turns it over. A little too high for I'll tell you Hyde. what, after Zach Eady got off to a terrific start of 7-9 shooting and 16 points, it has been a disaster for Zach it, it seemed like once he actually took that break is when he kind of maybe got a little tired. I mean, not, not tired, but like the juice just left him when he went when they had that 30-second stint on the bench. Oh, for his last six from the field and now a turnover to the resume. Newton has it, looking to get this game to a double-digit lead for the Huskies for the first time. Spencer off a curl. Three-pointer doesn't go. It will stay with UConn after Braden Smith tapped it out of bounds. Matt Painter during that timeout told his team that they need to play more physical with this UConn bunch who's been physical so far through 25 minutes. Oh, what room service for Samson Johnson. Great alley-oop pass by Tristan Newton right over the outstretched arms of Zach Eady wow. And Johnson, who's got the best athleticism and vertical in the building, slams it home. Lead up to 11, largest of the game for UConn. And here come the Huskies. Gillis, three, air ball, rebound, got by the Huskies. A foul on Zach Eady. Yep. Loose ball, it's going back to Connecticut. With an 11-point lead, a team that has won 11 straight tournament games by double digits has another double-digit lead, looking to cap off the most dominant two-year run in March Madness history. Oh, it, no doubt. No doubt about it. it. It would be the most dominant two-year run if the Huskies can keep this thing up. Looking to extend their 11-point lead now. Spencer gets it over to Johnson. UConn leading the rebound battle in this one, 9-4 to four in the second half. Newton lob once again! Huskies clicking on all cylinders! Back-to-back -back slams for Samson Johnson, and this game is up to 13. Matt Painter's got to think about calling a timeout here. Yeah, Tristan Newton has been a dime-dropping delight here so far in the second half. 11 points off the bench for UConn, only two for the Boilermakers. Braden Smith out to Gillis. Gillis into Edie. Edie double-teamed. Gets to his right arm and fouled to slow it down and maybe give Purdue some 
reassurance, if you will. Samson Johnson called for the foul, his third of the game. He has some serious bunnies, and he's just put it on display the last two offensive possessions for UConn. Yeah, back-to-back lobs, not good. Kind of a lapse in defense on the last two trips for the Boilermakers. Edie's first free throws up and good. Edie, three of four at the line today. Lance Jones back in for the Boilermakers. He has three fouls, so Painter rolling the dice a little bit. But you got to in the final game of the year, right? Oh, mate. Oh, absolutely. You got to pull out all the stops. Edie's second free throws up. No, no good. good. Rebound. Oh, so lane like violation called. Wow. Purdue catches a break there. So Edie's going to get a second chance opportunity to make this second free throw and get it to an 11 point game. Edie does make good on that second opportunity. 11 point game. Oh, man. Do you guys think UConn. Is going to hold this double-digit lead, or is Purdue going to inch their way back and make this one tight down the stretch? Let us know down in the comments section. Castle to Caravan, three, too strong. Another offensive rebound by Spencer. He'll hoist a three, no good. Another offensive rebound, and a foul is called. I believe this one's going to be whistled on Zach Eady. His second of the half, second of the game, and UConn will have another opportunity. They have just outworked Purdue tonight. And UConn out-rebounding Purdue by 8, 27-19. That doesn't happen often. And that's been the difference. 12-5 to five offensively. 12-5 to five offensively is brutal. As Cam Spencer gets a wide-open triple, he does not get it to go. A legal screen called on Sampson Johnson. Fourth foul. Oh, He's going to have to sit down. Four? Are you kidding? I mean... No wonder he was so wide open. He was holding, he was holding the guy. Yeah, he's going to sit down for probably the game, honestly. Maybe they get – Klingon's got three, by the way. Klingon picks up that, that last uh, – So that a lot foul. of foul trouble for the UConn bet centers, which that uh, could be dicey if you're the Huskies. Missed – What is – Oh, they're going to count the – they're going to count the bucket. So Maybe there was what happened interference. Is Braden Smith missed a floater. Zach Eady went for a putback slam. Didn't make it, but they're saying Klingon hit the ball or hit the rim. Yeah. Klingon put his hand up through the rim. Yeah, yeah, okay. I see the call now. Good call by Jeffrey Anderson, the Rochester native. Yeah, goaltending. 13 and a half minutes to go. It's a single-digit ball game. UConn trying to extend it back to doubles. Edie now up to 20 points as he's had a couple baskets here in the last couple possessions. Castle over to Klingon. Klingon will hand it off to Newton. Newton to the rim. Kicks it out to Caravan. Caravan drives to Spencer. Spencer inside. Hanging. And finishing! Crafty inside by Cam Spencer. Spencer showing no fear. Attacking Zach Edie inside. Lead back up to 11. Spencer has been impressive tonight. 9.7 boards for the guard. Edie fouled by Spencer as the veteran looked to get a strip on the double team, but he caught some arm. And Purdue is dangerously close to being in the one and one for the rest of this game. That could be that could be huge for the Boilermakers who haven't had much success from outside and on jump shots today. Maybe get, they get some points to the it line. It will be next foul one. putting Purdue at the line for one and one. Edie picked up his dribble. Now he finds Smith out wide. Smith over to Gillis. They try to post up Edie. They get it to a quick right hook. Doesn't fall. Rebound Spencer. That's be a foul on Mason Gillis. Fouled by Gillis. That's the fifth or is that it'll be the fourth or fifth foul on Purdue this half? Looks like it's fourth. Okay. Very quick with the uh, with the update there. On yeah, the I was going to say, right? Like, it that just happened, and they already got that number changed. Yeah. We'll see if it uh, if it is the fifth foul here as the graphic returns. I'm but. very impressed by Cam Spencer on the glass. We know that – oh, that is the fifth that foul, That is the, the fifth foul, so not quick enough, I guess. They I were. mean, Newton, Castle, Spencer, they get on the glass, but Cam Spencer is nearing 10 rebounds. Didn't think I would be seeing that one today. 11-point lead for the Huskies. DR in for Castle. 
Spencer has it. We'll run a pick and roll with Klingon. Swung over to Caravan, who's been very quiet tonight offensively. Five on the shot clock. Newton, screen. Newton drives. Gets to the left hand. What a finish! I wow. don't know how he got it to go, but switched to his right hand and somehow pushed it over Edie for a bucket. Newton up to 16 for the game. Cash them more than on prize picks, baby. <laughs> Use code CLNS for a $100 deposit match. Six of 12 from the field. Edie inside, Klingon defending, double teamed, swings it over, it finds a corner three for Purdue, no mm. good, Newton with the board. Feels like they needed that this one. This feels like danger zone for Purdue. Diara to Caravan, corner three, doesn't fall, rebound, how about, oh! They're going to get Cam Spencer for the foul as he ripped the ball away from Edie on the rebound. They whistle Cam Spencer, I honestly thought that was a clean I strip. I thought that was pretty clean, yeah. For you know a six a six three guy going up against seven four, that's Edie about as clean as it will gets. be shooting free throws when we return from timeout. Purdue trails by thirteen. Eleven thirty to go in the game. If you haven't already, hit that sub button, folks. Come on, almost twelve hundred people watching. Thirty five thousand people have watched at some point tonight. We've picked up, I think, what is that, 80 subscribers today. Let's get more. Let's get the 369,400. 52 more. Come on. I'll put the link to subscribe to the channel down here in the live chat for you guys. Make it a little bit easy for you. Open that link up. It'll prompt you to subscribe to the channel because we upload two daily videos on the hottest topics. In the NFL, college football, college basketball, the NBA playoffs are coming up, so we're all over that as well. We do live streams like this for special events like the NCAA tournament. We're doing the NBA playoffs. The play-in is just later this week, so very exciting stuff there. Actually, it's next week, so my bad, my bad on that. But the NBA playoffs are fast approaching, so we'll be live for a lot of those games as well. NFL draft is coming up. I mean, we are your go-to spot for NFL draft. Uh, coverage. I mean, we'll, we, we're going to be live on this channel, live on a bunch of different che team channels, constant videos being pumped out across the board for Chat Sports. You're going to want to be here to get the latest news and rumors on anything surrounding the, the biggest sports in the world. Well said, Smitty. 20 points for Zach Eady tonight. 8 of 17 from the field. Very rarely does he shoot under 50%, but he's doing it right now. Seven boards. Um, I feel as if he's going to finish with like 27 points. It's, just gonna it's going to be a heartbreaker for yeah. you. It's going to be a free throw. Well, he's going to get two free throws right now. Which It's just going to be free throws. There's one on one. One on one. Yeah. You never know. Good point. Good point. So he's got 20 currently? Yeah. Okay. So it's he's going to have four it's left. It's sweaty on, on Rolly's four. prize picks I actually don't know how. Does, does, uh, never mind. If we can get to 369,400 subscribers... I'm going to pour up a shot of Fireball for you guys and then hit, rip it right on stream, whether we're in game action or whatever. No matter what time we hit that, I'll pour up the shot and uh, deliver that for you guys. Sublink is in the chat. Wild Gang TV saying... LGM, baby. Saying tap in. Yeah, tap into chat sports here on YouTube. Right, Tom Stipe saying let's go Mets. Wrong sport, buddy. LGM. You got a lot of time for baseball to take over your life. Beat the Braves tonight. Beat the Braves tonight. That's all I was going to say. Uh, hey, that, could be a, could, that could be a turnaround win for the, uh, for the Metropolitans. Three of our last four. People are talking. People are talking. Tom Stipe saying Roloff is my goat. Smitty's Thanks. doing the chop. Smitty's doing the chop. So, so is Max Scherzer. All right, back to basketball. <laughs> Zach Eady at the line for one and one. We cover 11, everything here at Chess Sports. 11.30 to go in this ball game. Can UConn go back to back? Eady's free throw airballed it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh boy. I mean, good for your prize picks, bad for the Boilermakers. Missed opportunity for UConn. Largest lead of the game has been 13. Can UConn extend this lead? I have a feeling they might. I mean, I'll tell you what. I know Zach Eady's been good tonight for most part. This game has just showed me more and more why he's not going to be good in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, oh. Loose ball. ball knocked it away. It will be gathered.
by the Boilermakers. So turnover. One thing I'll say about Purdue is they've been first to these loose balls, getting on the floor, getting dirties. Edie down low in the post against Klingon. Up and good. Travel. But he traveled with it. Wait. It is a travel. It is a travel. I don't know why Klingon looked upset. Klingon, like, looked to Danny Hurley like he was upset. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shuffling him. That pivot foot moved about twice. All right. Every Eight damn shuffling, says Purdue. Zach Eady. Every day we're shuffling. Caravan left side of the floor as Purdue looks to get a stop here and come back into this ball game. Playing in. Left wing gets it over to Castle. Castle gets a screen. Drives. Stops. Floater. He airballs it. Offensive rebound. Kicked out to Diara. It's a three. No good. Rebound that time by Zach Eady. I mean, Not UConn has just dominated the I looked glass up very tonight. quick. Thought that floater went in. Dominated the glass. Braden Smith, pick and roll inside. Fouled. Braden Smith followed by Diara, and he'll go to the line for two free throws with 10.20 to go in this ball game. Over three minutes without a field goal made for the Boilermakers. I mean, for a team that's not hitting jump shots tonight, they're going to have to convert every opportunity at the line. They've made one three. They haven't even taken that many. They would have only taken like two or three, maybe. You're simply not beating UConn by not hitting shots from beyond the arc. Alabama kept it close for Alabama you know, shot 25 or 40, 35 minutes. Alabama shot better than 50% from three, including a half of basketball where they shot 70% from three, and they still were losing at the half and lost the game by 14. First free throw is good from Smith. Second free throw is good from Smith. And here we go. Ten minutes to go. These are the closing stretches. Who do you got, UConn or Purdue? There is some foul trouble for UConn, though. Samson Johnson with four, Klingon three, Spencer three, Diara three. See if there's enough time for that to be even make an impact in this ball game. Diara gets a screen from Klingon, drives, kicks it over to Castle. Now to Newton. Newton, time the shot clock. Gets a screen from Castle. Guard on guard action. Newton stripped. Finds Caravan left open for three. It's good! And that Lead was... up to 14, largest of the game. Caravan finally gets on the board with a triple. That was big. Wow. That was good defense by Purdue for 24 seconds. Problem is you need 30. Lawyer inside. Floater hits the side of the backboard. Could Purdue Rebound by the UConn unraveling. Husky. Out and running. Diara, rack attack! It's a 16-point game, Purdue timeout, and Storrs Connecticut is going bonkers. Wow. Defense wow. to offense, wow. Purdue on the ropes. UConn looking to become a back-to-back -back champion, and they're looking to do it in dominant fashion once again. I mean, Oh, my. We're talking about the best team of all time, potentially, in college basketball in this UConn team. The best two-year stretch of any college basketball team in the 21st century, UConn Huskies are nine minutes away from making that a reality. I mean, I'm being dead serious when I say this. When you look at the analytics, the pure dominance in Big East play, the Big East tournament, the NCAA tournament so far, this UConn team, 2023 to 2024, is statistically a top five college basketball team of all time. And if they put a stamp on this one and end up winning this game by 15 plus again or even if they get to 20 plus I, I think I'm confident saying this is the best college basketball team of all time and the craziest thing about it is who's their guy do they have a guy yes Tristan Newton leads the team in scoring yes Donovan Klingon is the best potentially the best interior defender in all of college basketball but like that, I feel like everybody on UConn just knows their role. Nobody's out there being the hero. They move the ball so effectively, so quickly. They know where each other is on the court. They're essentially the Avengers working as a complete unit, as a team. No man sticking out over the other. They just make it happen, man. Yeah, that, that's kind of how I see it. Like, they're just the most well-balanced team of all time. They have the shooting. You have Cam Spencer. You have Tristan Newton who can, who can extend. You have, you know, Stefan Castle who can extend. And he can score at all three levels. Newton can score at all three levels. Diara plays fantastic defense. You have a glue guy in Alex Caravan. You have 
Don McClingan, obviously, I mentioned the interior defense. They have no holes. There isn't a single hole on this UConn, on this UConn roster. Plus, you have some you know, ample um, ammo on the bench as well to unload when needed. Yeah, they're, they're something else, man. They are something else. Nine minutes to go in this ball game. Is UConn going to be able to close it out and establish them and write their names as one of the best teams of all time? Michael Roden says, UConn has earned my respect. Purdue has no answer. Yeah, they haven't hit jump shots. They, they haven't taken a bunch of threes, which we saw you're going to need to give out to, to give UConn your best punch. We saw that with Alabama. They went 50% from three, and they still lost by 14. This one could get even uglier if Purdue doesn't start, to start hitting outside jumpers. Braden, I mean, Fletcher Lawyer has been – Cast with a ghost today, non-existent. Yeah, you didn't even know he's got zero points. I so haven't seen I haven't seen a single highlight from him. Uh, Braden Smith came to play today, but he's basically just taking Warriors' spot from Evan Saturday's Curry's game against UNC. Lance Jones has been in foul trouble all night. Yeah, it's it's been a rough showing for those Purdue guards, and like you mentioned, Roley. At the end of the day, UConn's guards are just better. They're just better. I haven't even seen like. We haven't really felt the impact of Stephon Castle tonight much either, but he's filling up the stat sheet there. as well. Just been there, yeah. All right, see if they can finally get something going if you're Purdue. Edie inside, there's a right hook off glass. Now he's got 22 on the night. Nine minutes to go. 14-point deficit. Let's see if Edie can really get something rolling. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel as we have the last – Quarter or so minutes of this ball game coming up. Nine to go. 14-point ball game. And UConn just had more possessions at the end of the day in this first in this second half. 21 field goal attempts to produce 13. Caravan, five on the shot clock. Over to Castle. Right wing triple for the freshman. It is true. And back speak to of the a devil. 17 point lead. Speak of the devil. There's the impact of Stefan Castle. With eight and a half minutes to go. Put Castle on the more than two on prize picks. Gillis is going to screw me. <laughs> <laughs> could, could, could he get humbled the last couple of minutes? Uh, maybe. Braden Smith missing the mid-range shot. Oh, Rebound man. corralled by UConn. This feels night-night. I feel is, a dagger coming Purdue right now. is unraveling. Once this thing gets to 20, it is clipped. Newton spinning out to Caravan. Swings it. Castle, oh, corner three Wide for the open. dagger. Oh, it was halfway it down. It, it could not been. fall. <laughs> it could have been. Purdue out and running. Good kick ahead pass, but they reset the offense. Dump it inside to Edie, but it's – wow. Oh, wow, they're going to get Klingon for a foul there, reaching in on the entry pass to Zach Edie. Klingon's fourth. He's I pissed. tell you what, that was a skeptical call. I don't know if he – I think he just had his hand out. Like, I don't even think he, like – Reached over the Zach Eaton. He didn't reach over him. Maybe he got his arm, but I, I, I don't know what the official saw there. 17-point deficit. Purdue is going to have to do the impossible. I, I don't want to declare the game over, Smitty, but with how good UConn's played the, in the postseason, the Big East tournament, the NCAA tournament, I don't even fathom them getting outplayed the rest of the game. Like I would be shocked at this point if Purdue, if UConn doesn't win by 17 points. I'd be shocked. They take care of the basketball. They take good shots. They don't waste possessions. They gain more possessions crashing the offensive glass. They play the game the right way. And it just doesn't seem like they're letting up. They don't take their foot off the gas either because we saw against Alabama they had a comfortable-ish 6, 7 point, 8 point, 9 point lead. They extended it to 14 when the buzzer sounded. So they clearly go play the full 40 minutes, and they play it at a high level, and they play it very efficiently and soundly. Yeah. I mean, oh, clean music lover saying uh, he, ain't, he, he ain't happy with his prize picks. Only got 12 points, rebounds, assists from Klingon. And most of those are actually coming from the points category, actually. <laughs> TCAL says UCLA respect. Yeah, they're, 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 they're firmly in first uh, as far as national championships go. UConn would take a couple more decades to get, to get that record even in reach. Michael Roden says, no mercy allowed. Yeah, that's how, that's how UConn plays. They go for your throat, and they stomp on it once you're down. Yeah. Whew. Can't believe. I, I, I will say this, Smitty. I, in the office, was asked today, 
how I think tonight's game goes. I said, I think UConn wins. I think they cover. But I thought it was going to be one of those games that was close, and they end up covering. Free throws at the end. Free throws. Like, they win by, like, eight or nine points. But this has just been pure domination, really, from the fit. So, with, Once five, the minutes half to, with five minutes to go in the first half from till now, domination. Yeah. You you know, Purdue had that little spurt. They I think they scored five points in the last minute or so of the first half to make it look like it, the game was a lot closer than it is. But, man, I mean, UConn's been dominating the glass, specifically the offensive glass. They've hit their free throws. I mean, we got Zach Eady airballing a one-and-one. One. Um, so, UConn's played well when they're already a better team than Purdue. Plus, Purdue hasn't done themselves any favors either. Yeah. 4-14 from the field in this half for oh. UConn, or for Purdue, excuse me. Now, UConn is 10 of 23. So, I mean, they, had, they haven't been particularly efficient either, but lockdown defense. Crazy thing about this game, too, for the Huskies, they're up 17, and they're shooting 6 of 20 from 3. You didn't – that is uh, – I think that's 20 by, by 2. 30%. 30%. 30%. That, that's terrible. 30% is not good. And they've won games shooting – one games by bigger margins shooting worse. So – there's just so many ways that UConn can attack you as Edie lines up for one and one. Free throw is good. He will get a second opportunity. 21 points for Zach Edie. So, hey, I mean, he converts this one 15. The game's definitely not over yet, but it would take a monumental collapse from a UConn team that we have not seen do such in the Thanks last two both. NCAA tournaments. I, if you haven't paid attention, which we'll showcase prize picks one more time tonight. Uh, I can't have two points from Zach Eady. Press put on you by can, Purdue. Or does he have 23? He's got 22. Okay. Missed dunk by Samson Johnson on the lob. They were going for the highlight play and transition there. Braden Smith the other way for Purdue. They get it inside what position by Eady. Easy sick. dunk. He's got 24. I'm done. Well, now you can't allow any points. I don't know how that works. Push. It just takes your entry okay. right out. Okay. Prize picks. Use code CLNS. They're very nice when Castle it comes to Castle doubled like that. in the corner. They get out of it. They break the press. You wonder if they start going a little bit slower offensively here rather than get caught in that up-and-down pace, which would favor a Purdue comeback. Samson Johnson gets at the caravan. He slams it home! A perfectly executed set from Dan Hurley's Huskies, and they go back up by 15. Man, 15 I tell you what, I'm going to circle this one. I want to rewatch that play. That was unbelievable. Good such set. a good, such a good design. Cam Spencer gets the turnover. He might have thrown it off a coffin or. It's Husky ball. He got hands on it and then threw it off a Purdue player. It's going back to UConn with okay. a 15 point lead. Like I said, they just play so smart. They know this game of basketball, and I mean, they're they're very they're, they're just so cohesive, man. They get it into Castle. That's dangerous a pass. A foul is committed by Purdue. It's their six, so the next foul will put UConn in the bonus with 6.45 to go in the ball game. That's right. Last one to give for Purdue. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel here at Chat Sports. If it's your first time here, why don't you go hit that red subscribe button? We'll make sure you don't regret it. Let's get to let's get to 369-400 today. Is that over and back? That, no, I guess he never got over. A little uproar from the Purdue fans there in the crowd. I guess the ball never crossed, though, right? Yeah, I guess when the ball never crosses, your feet are cool. Almost turned over by the Huskies. They'll set up their offense with 15. Newton going to call for a screen here. Eight to on the shot clock. Step back three. Can't go, but there's I another mean, offensive rebound by UConn. They pull it out and will burn some clock. Have it. I it mean, the just Huskies have just been all over the glass today. 14 offensive rebounds compared to the Purdue six. Six minutes to go, and, I mean, a score here. Would Castle, feel the definite. drive, layup, good! It's up to 17 in favor of UConn. And Husky fans are getting the champagne bottles ready. Under six to go. Castle, 13 points for the Huskies. Edie has it at the three-point line. Hand off to Lawyer, his triple, no good. Foul called on Samson Johnson, boxing out Edie. So he is going to get a pair of free throws as they're in the double bonus. 
Double bonus for the last six minutes of the game, and it still won't matter. Okay. Samson Johnson fouls out with six minutes to go. Shout out to him. I mean, he's been physical all night, and Purdue hasn't really answered the call. I mean, UConn's been the more physical team. They've crashed the glass. They've given hard fouls. They've played good defense inside. Samson Johnson fouled out of this game. That was his fifth. So Klingon will come back in, I think, unless they, that was a graphical mistake by TBS. It doesn't look like it is. I believe that was his fifth. Backup center for UConn. He's been fantastic all year long. I know it's a bummer for him, but he's been solid tonight in the mean, uh, little minutes he's played. Klingon will come in. I actually don't know who the center would be if Klingon fouls out. He's got five, four. Probably, they probably go small ball there. Maybe Caravan at the five. I was going to say, my question is, even if they, which they're doing now, by the way, Klingon does not come back in. They're going to keep Caravan as a small ball five. First. Edie misses the first free yep. throw. I'm not going to lie. UConn is such a fundamentally sound team that I, I, I think you could roll with this lineup the rest of the way and you'd be fine. Edie makes the free throw, gets it to a 16-point game. I'm officially cooked. Oh, that is officially cooked. Wow, you needed a miss on both there. Watch him not score for the rest of the game. Castle gets it into Diara. They get it back to Castle now. Castle up ahead to Spencer. They break the press with ease, and now Newton will pull it out and chew some clock as wow. we're under five and a half minutes to go in this national championship. Newton. 12 on the clock. Gets it over to Spencer. Spencer working on Gillis. Spencer driving, two feet, jump stop, jumper, pure. It's an 18-point game, largest lead of the game for the Huskies, and this just looks like it's going to be another double-digit win in a tournament game for UConn. Uh, largest lead tonight for the Huskies, and you have to imagine they take 25-plus seconds off the shot clock with every possession they have the rest of this ballgame. Edie inside, backing down on Caravan, easy right hook. Arguably could have gone off. Timeout the by Purdue. 65 to 49, 450 to go in this ball game. We'll head to a timeout as Edie gets up to 27 points tonight. And while we are in this timeout, let's tell you about our prize picks, which is or our sponsor, which is prize picks. Spoiler alert, the number one daily fantasy sports app in America. And even though my prize picks entry lost today, which I'll show you what it was in a second. I still have fun playing prize picks every single day because it's so easy and it makes watching these high intense playoff games, whether it be in the men's and women's tournament, whether it be playoffs coming up in a week and a half in the NBA and NHL. All you do is pick more than or less than on two or more player stat projections and you can watch the winnings roll in and they make it more fun because you can actually go to the promos tab and see the community's plays from people like Sugar Sean O'Malley, Meek Mill, and ride with their picks or fade their picks. My picks today did not work out too well. Zach Eady less than on 24 points. He already has more than that. Dad, I was right on Tristan Newton and Castle, more than 15.5 points and 18.5 points rebounds assist. Gillis is not going to even come close to 5.5 points either. Unfortunate. Unfortunate loss for me, but I got that first deposit match when I downloaded prize picks and entered code CLNS, so I'm going to be able to continue to play. You can too. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, we're back in Arizona. Press still on for Purdue. It gets easily broken by the Huskies as Quick they just wind down this clock. Caravan, open three. He'll take. He'll miss. But this, this is going to be a double-digit win by UConn, and they shot very poorly from three. Yeah. Very ironic. They started three of five, actually, and they were going to finish like – Shades of their Northwestern game in the round of 32. Three, like 15. Edie, left hook, just misses that. <laughs> he's not going to score again. Uh, he's going to finish 27, <laughs> like I said. <laughs> He'll take him out in a couple minutes, give him an ovation. Zach Edie, listen, give, give him his props. One of the most dominant college basketball players that we've seen in the last 15, 20 years. I mean, statistically, he's been phenomenal. Yeah. But it'll end in the national championship game against a UConn Huskies team that just has no flaws. Newton, step back, step through three. It's going to be a step through two. I think his foot was on the line. And Tristan Newton will go to the line for two. 
foul on Zach Gidi. 350 to go in this ball game, and we are going to head to another timeout. Last time to make our push. Can we get to 369 400? 28 subscribers away. Daily content, multiple videos a day. We just picked up two there. We're 26 subscribers away now. Join the channel, live for the big events. Two videos a day on NBA, college football, NFL, college basketball at times. We have it all. Subscribe to the channel. Karan or Charon saying, how many points has Edie scored so far? I believe 25. Seven. 27. 27. 27 points for big Zach Edie, but it won't be enough. He's got 27 of the team's 49. I mean, call a spade a spade. The rest of Purdue just didn't show up offensively tonight. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Fletcher Lawyer, I believe, still a, a zero ball for him. Uh, a fat donut for Lawyer. Braden Smith showed up after he was a ghost on Saturday against NC State as well. And Lance Jones dealt with a little bit of foul trouble early in this game that kind of kept him out of a rhythm. And really just the Purdue offense has been anything but what they showed in the regular season and through the first couple of games of this NCAA tournament because they've been one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, but the UConn defense on the perimeter is just limiting them. They haven't allowed any shots to get up, really. They, Purdue hasn't taken a lot of three balls today. Kind of the anti-Alabama formula that they took in the Final Four. They've only taken five threes tonight. That's it, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work against UConn, who could score at will, essentially, on all three levels. And you know, Purdue has be, kind of become one-dimensional tonight. They've been... Basically feed Zach Eady. That's all they've done. And see what happens. And, and we kind of, I honestly saw that coming, which is why I predicted you kind of win and for them to cover the six and a half points. I just didn't see a way and any possibility, honestly, like any way that the Purdue guards were going to be able to consistently beat the UConn guards off the dribble. And that means it was going to be just completely forced to be all on Zach Eady's shoulders. And even though he has 29 points today, um, I just didn't think that that was going to be a sustainable way to beat UConn. They're just too good to be beat by one player. They are. You're going to have to have multiple efforts, and you needed one of your guards, either Lance Jones, Fletcher Lawyer, Brain Smith, to go off, and they haven't really done anything, to be honest. This is crazy. I, I, I see some people, BFP Auto and, and Peter's Family Farm, saying, they're, they're chirping the refs. I mean, if you whether you're a Purdue fan, a Purdue supporter, a Purdue better, there is no blaming the officials tonight. They have not hit jump shots. The guard play has been subpar at best. I mean, uh, there is only, no way to blame officials tonight. I mean, UConn's, UConn's got UConn, some unfavorable calls. UConn's only taken five free throws. Purdue's taken 13. How can you blame the refs for a decision like this? You know what's fascinating? That no, – or. Connecticut has just dominated the paint points and paint game today. Like Zach Eady, you would think big guy would be able to deter them from the rim. No. And it hasn't just been, it's not like it's just been Jonathan Klingon getting easy dunks and whatnot. No. I mean, you Castle see, inside. Newton's, Newton's been getting Spencer. floaters whenever he wants. D, uh, DR has been going up and catching some lobs. Yeah. Samson Johnson as well. What's up, Ron Baker? Good to see you, buddy. Newton makes the first free throw to make it a 17-point game. Largest elite has been tonight has been 18. Can be that with a free throw here. Tristan Newton's been struggling too, by the way. He had a combined 17 points in the last two games, but the fifth-year guard transferring in just before last season from Eastern Carolina up to 18 on the game today, and that's what the lead is for the Huskies. Tristan Newton, the difference tonight. Braden Smith inside, That's bumped, foul, fouled. Man. He'll go to the line for two. 342 remaining. It's looking like Purdue would need the biggest miracle in college basketball history to make this one any, any bit competitive. UConn is going to be the ninth school to go back-to-back -back in the NCAA tournament. First time since Florida did it in 2006-2007. Yeah. Rain Smith, hashtag of course, misses the free throw. Lid on the rim for Purdue here in the second half. I'm, I'm interested to see what I mean, their final percentage is. They scored 19 were. points in this half. Man. It was 36 to 30. Yeah. UConn is outscoring Purdue, at least right now, 31 to 20 in the second half. 
Not exactly a good formula if Purdue wanted to get back in the game. Probably don't get no, outscored not, in the not, second not, half. Not, not going to work, Jim. No, not going to work. Almost turned over. Oh, it is turned over on the inbound pass, so Purdue will have it. Could this be the start of the comeback? Probably not. I think I'll quit my job if Purdue wins this game. Okay. I might have to be taking over the, the heat report if, uh, if if Purdue ends up making the comeback. They'd have to score 17. I don't if, – if UConn – They'd have to essentially double their point total here in the second half in the last three and a half minutes. Yeah, that's not happening. And, Purdue, and UConn's just not letting them get a jumper off from inside. They're not going to do outside. it by doing layups. No. ED won't bring you back into this game, but Purdue does score on the up and under from ED Zach now e. up to 31 on the game. Good up and under there is UConn goes small with Caravan as the five. Klingon has four fouls. UConn beats the press this time. Are they gonna start? Are they even gonna foul here, or just try to play tight defense? Yeah, I don't know. Spencer has on the right side. Three minutes to go. 15 point lead. Husky faithful on their feet and showing their appreciation. Shout out Matthew Peterson who told me UConn wins by 15 earlier in the day. Which just got called. Oh, what the <laughs> hell? What Dan Hurley? Dan Hurley just pushing Cam Spencer. That's wild. He, he doesn't get teed up for it because how could you? This is a turnover because he made Cam Spencer that travel. Was wild. <laughs> that is wild. Lance Jones driving on Spencer, getting to the rim, laying it up and in. All right, now it's only a 13-point game, 2.45 to go. UConn will talk things over with a timeout. We've seen crazier happen, but what a what wild decision by Dan Hurley, who we know is an animated head coach. Right he in, just chewed uh, out Cam Spencer right, on the run back to the bench. Right in front of the official, just push, pushes his own player. I, I love college basketball. I mean, you're just not going to see that anywhere else, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, what's up, Frank? Yeah, uh, I, I don't really want to think about it right now. I'll have to think about it in 24 hours when the Heat are going to take on the Hawks, which we'll be live for, but um, I don't really want to think about that team right now, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. See you later, Sawyer. Yep, that's exactly what I just did. Exactly what I just did. Come on, can we make this final push over the last 246? We do have a timeout here, so they're giving you some extra time to go on ahead and hit that subscribe button here at Chat Sports. Bringing you live streams just like this all the time for the biggest sporting events, NBA playoffs coming up. Two videos a day on all things NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball. We've been hitting a ton over the past couple of weeks. So if you like, if you love good sports content, if you love entertainment, why don't you consider subscribing? We'll have you covered on all things Sporting World. Yeah, the, the, the crazy part is about this UConn back-to-back -back is it's not the same team. They lost five out of their eight rotation players from last season. The only three guys that stayed on this team was Alex Caravan, um, Donovan Klingon, and Tristan Newen. Yep. Now, those are very solid three, but... But the Klingon wasn't exactly the household name, name last season that we knew we know him to be today. Yeah, but he was he getting... He showed flashes. I, I will say, I'm pretty sure he was picked as the preseason Big East player of the year. Hmm. Is that true? I think he... Uh, him or Kolick was, but I'm pretty... Klingon was getting a lot of Definitely baby national baby praise. Definitely preseason defensive player of the year, maybe. He was getting a lot of national praise before the year. Foul on the inbound, so UConn will go to the line in a one and one situation, 245 to go in this college basketball season. If you're Purdue, only two seconds coming off the clock. It's not the worst thing that could happen. Tristan but Newton, a what a game for the shooter. guard. Makes yeah. the first, now 19 points, seven assists, five rebounds. Check yourself. I'm all in. Says, give me a shout out, Tyler. Shout out to you, my man. Newton second. Good as Purdue trails by 15, and UConn gets to a very nice point total. Nice. Brain Smith down the lane. They're going to need to start hitting threes if they have any idea of coming in this one. Klingon back in. Edie dunks it. Klingon took off his sh under shirt. I know for a fact Klingon was had a compression shirt on underneath. Now he doesn't. He always plays it one on. 
Good press beater there by UConn as they lead by 13. 30 up to 33 yeah, points 33, on the game. Wow. Is it the most meaningless 33 points? Maybe not meaningless, but like it doesn't feel impactful. arguably the quietest 33 ever in a, in a, in a major NCAA yeah, tournament right? game. Timeout on the floor. I mean, Cam Spencer got trapped in the corner and called a TO. Zach Eady has arguably two thirds of his team's, team's points. Is more. Yeah, he's more than half. That's for sure. He was getting 33 to 23. That's yeah. It's about it's about 67 percent. 33. Yeah, it's about yeah. Wow. I mean, this is just, I mean, I, it's hard to put into words how dominant this UConn team has been, dude. Yeah, I mean, whether, whether it was Purdue, whether it was, you know, I know Houston lost in the Sweet 16, but hey, you know, if Jamal Shepard doesn't think it get matter. hurt, I don't think it would I, I know a lot of people said mattered. that Houston would have probably given UConn the best fight this year. I actually, after watching this game, I don't think it would have mattered. Nuts. Zach Eady joins. David Thompson, Bill Walton, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Jerry Lucas Good as two-time National Player of the Years. Good list to be on. Yeah, good list to be on. Might not have the same NBA success as the rest of that crew, but you never know. You develop an outside shot out of nowhere. I don't know why that one, Jim. <laughs> I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Two minutes and 14 seconds left. It's going to be UConn ball. They get it into the backcourt. You wonder if Purdue waves a right white flag here. Kind of feels like they have by not trapping Tristan Newton here. Just playing it out down 13 let, with let, two minutes to go. Yeah, like, like I said, Purdue's, I mean, UConn's going to take all the time off the shot clock that they could possibly need. Caravan, Caravan baseline driving. drive, clinging, push shot, good. Yep. 15 point game. And if you didn't think it was over yet, that one certainly will make you think it's over. Wave the white flag, Boilermaker fans. Rain it's Smith all to over. the rim, misses. There's Edie on a stat pad put back dunk. 13 point lead. Newton to Caravan. Up to Spencer. Just absolutely easy work for the Huskies to break the press. Stephon Castle's going to go to the line for two with a minute 31 to go. Uh, hey, we got a good first half, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did get a good, good, good first half. Uh, it's going to be Newton at the line again. First one's up. And good, he'll get an opportunity to shoot two free throws here after conver converting the one and one Freshman from Georgia has been fantastic. Next stop, the NBA. Stephon Castle likely going to be a lottery pick in the June NBA draft. Donovan Klingon, if he comes out, will likely join him in that lottery. Two lottery picks for Dan Hurley. He had one last year in Jordan Hawkins. Winning 14th to the Pelicans. Edie, alley -oop dunk, good. Edie's going to finish with damn near 40 points. It's hilarious. He's got 37 now. They get it into Newton. And now they're deciding to trap. This is a little bit of a wild. Good yeah. pass by Newton up at the castle. Now Spencer. Spencer just going to dribble it out here. I think, I think Purdue knows. They know. Purdue knows, and they're done. The Husky faithful are really starting to celebrate now. Two-time champion Donovan Klingon. Two-time champion Alex Caravan, two-time champion Tristan Newton. They will put up a shot. It's clinging inside, lays it up and in, up to a 15-point lead, 75-60. Three for Braden Smith. Air ball. Air ball. Oh, boy. Purdue going out sad. Wow. And Danny Hurley is going to empty the bench. And give a proper send-off to this starting lineup, which has been so dominant for UConn. Stefan Castle, Tristan Newton, Donovan Klingon, Alex Caravan, Cam Spencer. What a year for the Connecticut Huskies. They were the best team in college basketball all year long. And then they just steamroll right through the tournament. Double-digit victories in all six NCAA tournament games. 
They did this last year. They'll do it again. It's 12 straight games in March Madness that they've won by double digits. Wow. I mean, has there ever been a better run? And this is the best point differential in a, of all time this season, 2024, plus 140. It's kind of crazy that the other UConn team wasn't on that top four list. Yeah, it actually is kind of <laughs> What, right? Well, the Illinois game probably really boosted that. And the Stetson game. Yeah. Yeah, 39 and 25, respectively. Under 30 seconds to go. UConn remains undefeated when Danny Hurley's son oh, I wanted to checks into the say game. It. I wanted to say it. Oh, that's good stuff, man. Shout out to, uh, to Little Hurley. As they'll just let this shot clock expire with seven seconds to go. Will Purdue even attempt a shot? Wow. Man, good for the Huskies. They've officially entered Blue Blood territory. Yes, they have. If it wasn't apparent last year, they have made it undeniable in 2024. UConn, the national champions once again. Immortality for this Connecticut team that in my eyes goes down as the best college basketball team in history. Wire to wire, every game that they played all season long, domination. Sixth national championship in school history. The first team to go back to back since Florida in 06 and 07. Danny Hurley has put Connecticut back on the mountaintop of college basketball. Wow. Confetti falling. UConn players and fans alike celebrating. Zach Eady with 37 tonight, but it was futile. Purdue's guards didn't show up. Purdue fans in tears. Wow. I mean, Danny Hurley loaded back up next year and just go for the three-peat. Danny Hurley said back when they were at a low point in 2020-21, you better come get us now because I'm telling you, we're going to be coming. And he is not a man that makes false promises. Back to back. In stores Connecticut. He hasn't just arrived. I mean, he has stamped his flag in the ground of college basketball. Danny Hurley is without a doubt the best coach in college basketball. It's, it's, it's undeniable now. I mean, he's, he's, you lose five players from a championship rotation just 365 days ago. You run it back with, you know, three core contributors plus a bunch of transfers, a great freshman in Stephon Castle, and they leave no doubt. I mean, my, last year in the what was it, the Final Four, that Miami was the closest deficit here? 13 points? I know they always talk about how it's always been double-digit leads. 13 was the closest deficit that this UConn team has had in two NCAA tournaments. Danny Hurley bringing another title back to Storrs, Connecticut. And I know you'd like this, Rolly. Bringing another tournament back to the Big East Conference. Back-to-back -back national championships for UConn, but also the Big East Conference. I think this is without a doubt that you can say the Big East is the best conference in all of basketball. After a couple teams in their top six being left out of the dance, Seton Hall, St. John's, Providence, UConn gets retribution from the selection committee, taking it all the way to the NCAA championship. Seton Hall won the NIT, correct? Seton Hall did win the NIT. Only three teams end their season with a victory. Yeah. The CBI, the NIT, and the NCAA. Two out of the three come from the Big East. It's not a coincidence. I don't make the rules. It's not a coincidence. And by the way, the Seton Hall team uh, beat Indiana State, who was playing like it was their Super Bowl in the NIT. So the Big East is dominant. Danny Hurley is dominant. And the UConn Huskies are the most dominant program in all of college basketball. Wow. Thank you to everybody tonight who has joined us for this live stream. Over 47,000 of you who tuned in to tonight's live stream. Couldn't have done it without you. Shout out to Alec Lewis, big time, who left us earlier in tonight's stream, but not before donating a monster $500 in Super Chats. Um, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what else to say, man. Utter dominance from the Husky program. Yeah, now all eyes, I guess, will turn if you're a college basketball fan 
to what John Calipari does moving from Kentucky to Arkansas if that gets finalized. And, and I think Kentucky the one thing that does. I'll keep my eye on the most here is what happens with some of these UConn players because I think there's a decent chance they can get some returning guys that you would expect to go to the league. Like, Klingon and Stefan Castle are projected to be lottery. It'll probably better, never get better for those. Caravan two. is a second round pick. Could see him returning. If I mean Dan Hurley's also a very persuasive guy. I'll tell you what, I think Hurley could sway Klingon and Caravan for the three I think Castle's as good as gone because he's gonna be a lottery pick. He came in as a true freshman and won it. Um but I think there's a there's a decent sized chance, in my opinion, that you could convince Klingon to come back. Because he's been here for the first two. And if you talk to him, like, listen, we can pay you a lot of money. Not as much as the NBA can as a top 10 pick. But a lot of money for one more year in Storrs, Connecticut. Work on your back-to-the-basket game. And try to do something that has never been done. And win three NCAA tournaments in a row. Like, I wouldn't put it past them. If Klingon returns, you can book Caravan returning. And if they have those two guys back... With the emergence of Samson Johnson, Hassan Diara, some of the other freshmen, Jalen Stewart. I think his name's Solomon Ball as well. Yep. Like, I would not put it past the Huskies to reload and have a real solid chance to be the first team in college basketball history to win three championships in a row. Tiny bit of a side note here from uh, Brian Green, who says, don't forget Nate Oates was an assistant under Danny Hurley previously. Now... We talked about John Calipari moving to Arkansas. Nate Oates could be in line for a potential move to Lexington, Kentucky to take over the Wildcat program. Interesting to note there by uh, Brian Green. But, man, is there anybody – could you even could you potentially see Kentucky throwing a can't-refuse offer at Dan Hurley? They're definitely picking up the phone because this guy I, is I, by far I, the – I don't. I don't tell you. I don't think there's a way Hurley. Leaves. Oh, I don't. Think, I don't. I don't think there's a way Hurley leaves either. But you got to pick up the phone. Um, he's the best coach in the in the business right now. And I mean, Kentucky is as big a brand as there is in college basketball. But hey, UConn is uh, quickly approaching their number of national championships here. That is their sixth. And like you mentioned in the pre-show, Roly, six national titles in six national title game appearances. They don't lose when they get to the big one. Uh, Nino, I am not a Bears fan. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. This is what a run. Well, I can't say what a game, but I can say what a run. Yeah, by UConn. Wow. Mike saying a three peat is likely. Yeah, I mean, if he can, you like like Rolly said, if he can convince Caravan and Klingon to return, which I, I think is is entirely possible. They will be right there as the preseason number one. He's going to hit the transfer portal. Players going to want to come play for the back-to-back -back national championship, national champions and try to run it back for a three-peat. And uh, Dan Hurley has shown that even when he loses an immense amount of talent, he's right back there reloading and ready to roll for another national championship run. One of the elites in college basketball now. All right. Wow. Fun stream on hand. I'm glad we had almost 53,000 people tune in throughout the night to witness UConn capturing their sixth national championship as a program. It was awesome. Fun time. Uh, we were live for the first two days of March Madness yeah. on round one, the round of 64, live for the final four round and then the national championship game. Hopefully, we'll be able to do stuff like this next year as well. Absolutely. Uh, we can do it. it because of the support you guys give us. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll sign off. The next time we'll be live for a big event will be the NFL draft in just two and a half weeks. I think it's 17 days to the day. So make sure you're subscribed for that if you're an NFL fan. And uh, congrats to the UConn Huskies. For, Nick, for Tyler Smith, I'm Nick Roloff. Everybody go watch One Shining Moment. Thank you.